everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast, the wrestling podcast we review every segment of Raw all the way throughout 2014 and we give you the wrestling news of the week. My name, if you are inquiring on this last ever episode of LTW in 2014, is Turbo Tony and you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not out, I'm telling you why Matty Claus is coming to town. I was wondering whether you were going with that, with like Matty Claus or like Santa Matt. Santa Matt. I don't know which one's better. I decided <laughs> to go with Matty Claus. It's a bit late in the year though, isn't it? Well, you know, we did do a Christmas episode, you know, so I just thought I'd add that in there, you know. That's Who knows? Funny. You could be Santa for anyone knows. You could be resting right now after, you know, a hard day's work, you know. That's very true. On your Undertaker-like schedule. Yeah, yeah, just the once. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing, Matt? How was your Christmas? Uh, pretty good, actually. Feeling the effects of uh, all the winter cold, which is really a pain in the ass. But so, one, so what you're saying is you're sick this week? Yeah, and I'm the sick. One, you don't week. have to deal with me being sick. No. <laughs> uh, I'm up to my ears in frozen bullshit. <laughs> you know, the worst part is I literally lay down the law with the family I was just like frozen if it comes on the TV I'm hiding away upstairs <laughs> I refuse to watch it sort of thing I, I guess you can't really play that card no I can't you have kids no, I get played with the card oh well you must not love your children then and I'm like oh well now I feel bad uh, but yeah as having two girls man the amount of frozen stuff around the house it just multiplied it's grown it's taken over like vines <laughs> on the outside of a, of a abandoned house just getting getting in everywhere. So, yeah, uh, Anna and Elsa own my house, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully they don't invade this podcast and you just won't get Let It Go as our intro each week. Uh, uh, what a way to get rid of our 170 subscribers. <laughs> what a way to get rid of one of your hosts. I know, right? I know. <laughs> just be me talking. Oh, dear. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Uh, thank you all for the support. We got a great support on the last episode. Lots of questions, and we will be answering a buck ton of them this week. Um, just to let you know as well, if you'd like to interact with us, you can uh, tweet us by our Twitter handle, at TalkWrestlePod, and um, you can get um, some interesting feedback from Matt, who handles that side of things. Uh, and also, if you do want any questions asked, Twitter is a good place to answer them, and also the comments section below. Uh, so, Pat showed it for you this week. Uh, we've actually got some news this week, including a uh, some news on TNA, which uh, is kind of bringing us back to the ugly side of that company, unfortunately. Uh, but a little bit of news regardless. We've got a lot of fan feedback. Uh, answering a lot of questions, including one from our friend Chris, who we also podcast with on another show. Uh, Matt doesn't know about this yet, but is it about interest? Something interesting. I don't know the question. I'm aware of there being a question. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we also got our fail of the week, uh, which uh, is quite a hilarious one and uh, quite a recent one, I would say. It's not going to be a Sin Cara one, is it? Mm, well, there's too many. Too many. Yeah. <laughs> How how can you how can you just pick one out? It's just no. Nah. Um, and also we've got the Christmas edition of Monday Night Raw, and whether or not myself and Matt enjoyed the episode, um, I will have to say that I watched the entirety of Raw this week in one sitting. I very rarely do that. If you guys don't know how we roughly do this, yeah, I managed it as well. To be fair, yeah, I I normally watch it over two nights. I normally do it an hour and a half one night, hour and a half the next night. I didn't have that luxury, obviously, because of the Christmas, you know, period, you know, spending time with the family. Um, so I watched it all in one go. So it's my complete thoughts on watching it just nonstop. And, you know, we've been huge advocates for three hours. We'll kill this show. I have never felt that any more than I do this week after watching three hours. You really, th- well, so was it just a roar that you didn't enjoy or? We'll go into it. I don't want to, people right. know my thoughts on the three hour format. I think it will kill. WWE person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, but, I, know, I know what you're saying. But we'll go from there. Uh, we also got a few comments from from people new. Welcome to the podcast. We hope you do enjoy the show. 
However, let's get on with things, Matt. We've got plenty of stuff to talk about. And the first of which is our news. And WWE, uh, this is something that you brought to my attention, actually. And I looked up on myself. We're big fans of NXT here, as you all know. We've heavily praised all the NXT specials this year. That's it. Um, WWE released its top 25 matches of 2014. What I thought, first of all, before we go into our major talking point of this, which is something that makes us you know, quite prideful of being fans of NXT, uh, is that I think number three or number four is actually our match of the year, the Wyatt's versus Shield Elimination Chamber match, which, if you remember, was not even nominated for their Slammies, which is even more ammunition for. The Slammies mean shit. And... It's the one thing I couldn't quite understand, is after seeing that, as it's like, and it wasn't nominated for a Slammy. Yeah. Some matches that were nominated for Slammies weren't on that list. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Bah? There you are. Um, so, the one thing that the main thing talking point of this is that there are four NXT matches in the top ten. Peaking at number two being the Neville versus Zayn match that we said. If we were to pick over, I mean, because it happened after our choices... Yeah. For the year. So that was the main thing that was choice. And I still stuck with that, but man, it's close. It is so close. Ooh. Yeah. I think is I really like I, I watched um I watched NXT the next day. Mm. Um not the next day, the next week. Yeah. So I'm still one behind, but like oh just as a result, sort of um we had Adrian Neville versus Owens. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it was gold. I saw like a video clip of him taking the most brilliant DDT of all time. And he's just flipping all over the place. Oh, from the top rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Randy Orton style. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it was great. Good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Uh, and we said before, the way that uh, the NXT special ended means that we're, in the future we're going to have a Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens title match. Whew. Yeah, that's enough to sell me on the next special. That's <laughs> but yeah, uh, four NXT matches um, on that top ten list. And I, you know, I have to fully agree. Uh, I think that NXT's had a fantastic, the best year it's ever had this year. Oh, yeah. Um, which is, you know... Well, I don't know whether that's... T- t- I don't know whether it's to the credit of the network... What do you mean? Well, now that the network's around and NXT's available on it. Exclusively on it, yeah. Exclusively on it. Yeah. Not that I watch on a network. Yeah. But could that be the fact that as a result, it's like, well, we're now red, we're now freely available to those with the network. So we need to sort of step up. I mean, it's always been good even before the network, but like recently since the network's come out, like, their pay, their takeover events have been massive. I I, I don't think it. I, I I don't think there is something to do with that. But I think all, when NXT started, it was it was tough to get over the hangover of it being the game show NXT, which is what we. What oh we yeah, yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you, you, that. you get all these guys and they're saying, "Oh, we're continuing NXT, but in a new format." People probably aren't completely sold on that, thinking this is still lower league, right? <laughs> I yeah. think as time has, has gone on and you've seen the likes of main event stars now in WWE came from NXT. Was it the first NXT champion was Seth Rollins? He is now a main event star, you know, wrestling in multiple main events on pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes it a little bit more legit for these guys to kill themselves for NXT, knowing that there is a legitimate chance you could become something on the main roster. And once that belief is set in, people will do good work for, that, for, for NXT. And I think you're seeing it now. And plus the fact that they've signed, like huge, huge talent for that. Huge, for that. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're looking at, you know, Kevin Owens, we're looking at Finn Balor, we're looking at uh, Hideo Itami, which, before people go, oh, they had different names because of WWE, yes, we know that. We call them by these names because they yeah. are their names now. We've <laughs> so did Daniel them. Bryan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. John Cena's not his real name. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, John Cena is his real name, isn't it? Pretty sure it is. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. They do. They keep referring to him as his mum and dad and Mr. and Mrs. Cena, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's been a great year for NXT. And I think that, the, like I said, partly of that is to the belief is we, if we do do well, if we do well here, we will get caught up. And once that belief sets in, then they, these guys will give their best stuff each night in, you know. Oh, yeah. Trying to solidify that spot. And, you know, that's kudos to, to Triple H, at very least. He, we give him a lot of slack here on this show, but one thing that he's always done right is NXT and the performance. He's always done right by NXT, yeah. yeah so, fair enough. Uh, second piece of news. I, I caught this 
Just li- uh, literally just before we were about to air. So I had to put it in. Dixie Carter in TNA. The one thing she needs to be focused on right now is the relaunch of her company on a different network. Okay? That's the only thing that this woman needs to care about. She doesn't need to care about what's happening in World Wrestling Entertainment. Doesn't have no. anything to do with her at the moment. Okay? The fact is, and before I begin this, TNA has and never will be now competition to WWE. And here we go. Here's what she said recently in response to Mr. McMahon's statements on the Austin podcast that there is a lack of ambition on the roster. She stated that there's never been an issue in ambition in TNA. And, you know, she's never had to have a problem with riling guys up, getting them ready for shows and stuff like that and reaching up. Okay, fair enough, Dixie. Okay, this is where I begin. This is the first thing. This is the less of the two things I'm annoyed about. So she states that there's never been a lack of ambition in TNA. I don't doubt that. These guys go out there, and I've seen the likes of Bram and Abyss downright almost kill each other in the ring to almost no response. You know, they, these guys are going... To 300 there, people. Yeah. yeah, to 300 people, right? All these guys without ambition. All these guys killing themselves to try and get ratings for you. And yet you're still nowhere better off than you were five years ago that's an indictment on you dixie carter not the wrestlers okay yeah um it's all well and good having all this ambition if you cannot direct it where it needs to be directed um it it needs a authority figure that can put it in the direction that it needs to go uh so dixie carter can run her mouth and say oh we're much better than wwe our guys have got lots of ambition it doesn't matter as long as you it doesn't it doesn't make any difference if you don't use it correctly which you haven't done um, and that's an indictment on, on her, you know, and her creative. And the likes of people that she's hired to do creative, like Vince Russo, okay? So that's down to her, right? But I'm not as annoyed about that. This is what really annoys me, right? Apparently, there is news that Dixie and a lot of other people in TNA are upset with Spike TV for two things. For bumping their show to a different time slot, so it wasn't primetime TV, for the last two episodes, and also not making reference to them moving to Destination America. Why should why should Spike TV, like, push another t- TV channel? Exactly. TNA, do you run advertisements for WWE? Do you? No, exactly. no you don't, do you? Because they're <laughs> your fucking competition idiots that's exactly why spike won't uh, make um, any advertisements you moving to another network the fact is they're a company they purchased you know the that time slot for tna to get ratings and they failed okay that's why they're leaving okay it's a business if dixie wanted anyone to help them they're in the wrong business you're not going to get any help in professional wrestling. You have to do it all on your own, especially when you're working with TV contracts, okay? I've got absolutely no issue with Spike doing this. I've got no issue with them bumping the show, putting something else that they want to kind of get over as a more show that they're going to be building for the future. That's it. Oh, network. is that something that could actually make us money? Yeah, yeah. Something that, you know, we're going to have in a couple of weeks. We still want to get fans into it, put it in that prime time slot. TNA, if you thought Spike was going to do any favours, you're idiots. You know, I, I I think Spike already did very well by you by keeping you on this long, personally. Yeah? And the very idea that you're, oh, they're so annoyed that they haven't made any reference to Destination America. The minute the minute that they start running advertisements for WWE Raw is the minute I'll start agreeing with them. You know? <laughs> TNA yeah. have never made an advertisement for WWE because it would be stupid. That's exactly the same for, for Spike. This is my biggest p- p- uh, piece of advice for Dixie. Stop looking for other people to help you out. Do it by yourself. Okay? No one's going to help you out. Biggest no. thing for Dixie? Shut up. Shut up, yeah. Deal with your own company. Keep your mouth shut. Too many times you do this. You talk, and you even do it on the show. You talk about, um, you have even openly talk about how Steph runs the company on, t- on, on, on a TNA show, right? The fact is, you'll never be, you always come off when you talk about this looking bee show. You know, you always look like you are the second show. You should never put yourself in a position where you're viewed in that manner. Yeah, even though you are, but you should yeah. never put yourself in a position where you are. And keep referencing WWE like this just doesn't do anything for you. You know, you don't have the edginess of a Paul Heyman that can spin it like like he did in ECW. You know, you don't have the luxury of freedom you know, with your network, because your network is technically stamping down and you're removing all the sex appeal and blood from your show. 
you know you have to make yourself not to look like a, a b show which unfortunately you ha you are but you, you make yourself look like it all the time unfortunately and when i whenever i hear i open her mouth and talk about wwe i shake my head because it's never going to come out well you know um but come on with the whole spike thing come on it's a business no one's going to help you out why the hell would they run advertisements for a rivals <laughs> network just get with the program jesus christ it's like us running advertisements when we were getting big for other podcasts saying go and watch them instead of watching us we, it doesn't matter whether we like them or not because we do like other podcasts of course but yeah. it's just bad business for us you know that's just that's taking our viewers and say go there instead you know that's it it's just like we don't it's just like it's almost, it's almost like a uh, sort of we don't want you go there yeah yeah I'm sorry we, we love you guys so stick with us <laughs> yeah um, so yeah, t t id idiotic. And whenever, like I said, whenever she opens her mouth about WWE, I shake my head. But just, it's not even the, so much the lack of ambition line. It's the spike stuff. Come on, guys, come on. She hasn't made any reference to that. It's just, you know, rumblings backstage that there's people getting pissed off. That there's no reference to it. Come on, come on. You should know this by now. And yeah, exactly. Fan feedback. We have a lot of fan feedback this week because we got a lot of fan feedback from you guys. That's how it works. Uh, we got a, uh, quite a few interesting questions, and the first of which is from our friend Chris, who we do a gaming podcast with from time to time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he is a fan of the show. We, I've actually spoken to him here and there because you know, a good friend of ours. We we game a lot, and he wanted this this question to be brought up, you know, in regards to um, something that he's quite interested in and something that's been going, making the news around this week. So I thought I'd pick it up here for this show. Don't worry, got you know, our subscribers, we do have questions from you. We are answering them. But he says, uh, bring up the rumours, well, not the rumours, but the actual statement that the Green Power Ranger, Jason David Frank, um, wants his fight with CM Punk. He wants CM Punk's first fight to be against him. And... Um, Apparently, the star stuff going on that CM Punk has basically snubbed him for the fight. Yeah, I saw a video on TMZ where he's almost just laughed at the whole concept. But apparently, he sort of played dumb as in he doesn't know who it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, here's the thing, right? So the question's kind of like the question alludes to: Do we think a fight between Jason David Frank and CM Punk will happen? My initial assessment was no, and that hasn't changed. Right? Uh, first of all. Whoever were the parents of Jason David Frank, don't name your kid three first names. Come on, yeah, right. Give a guy, you know, give a guy a break. Um, but you know, fair enough to the guy, right? I will go back to something that CM Punk said before I begin the reasons why I don't think this will happen. Right? CM Punk going into UFC, no matter who he fights, will draw money, big money. Okay? Yeah. Doesn't matter who he fights. He can fight a broomstick. He will make money. Okay? Um, because of the fact it's CM Punk's first fight. So in that case, CM Punk will look at Jason David Frank the same way he looked at Triple H and say, "You, I don't need to fight you. You need to fight me. Yeah. Yeah? You might be a better fighter than I am. You might have more credentials in this field of work than I have, but I'm still more box office than you at the moment. You need this fight. You need. If you fight me, you'll get a lot more money you know, than you would ever get in a fight. Me, yeah. I'm going to make the same money regardless, you know, whoever I fight. I'm going to make a shit ton of cash, but it's not going to change much in regards to who I fight, you know? So CM Punk will be looking at this guy and thinking it doesn't, it it doesn't matter, you know, like, you, I don't need to fight you, you know? Yeah. However, my thoughts on this is that it's all irrelevant. It doesn't matter what CM Punk thinks, and it doesn't matter what Jason David Frank thinks and wants, the final buck stops with Dana White. And I don't think Dana White wants CM Punk to lose his first fight. I have firmly believed that CM Punk's first fight will be put up against a scrub. He'll be up against someone who will be beatable. Either at the end of his career and lost all determination, his body's battered, he's just not ready for it. Or he'll yeah. be going against a young buck who... is being put in there to be beaten, I'd say. The thing is, though, with UFC, it's it's... It's a gamble though, because it's just like he'll be against someone who he'll beat, but it's not like professional wrestling where it's like, why well, no, he'll lose? I know. I booked it that way. Right, but the thing is, right, I don't, I don't much know much about UFC, and we've said that before. This is outside of our area of expertise. 
the main thing I'm running this from is a similar sport, which is a sport, legit, although arguably there's a lot of corruption in it, boxing, which I do know a lot about, right? This is something that I follow a lot. In boxing, there is tons of times, we look at our, what is it, our heavyweight prospect, Anthony Joshua, right? He is going to be a big dude in the future, okay? And he's been winning tons and tons of fights. You know why he's been winning tons and tons of fights? Because he's been part up against people he know, that, that his promoter knows he can beat. There's no point in putting uh, putting people up like that, rising stars or could be future box office attractions, against people that could give them a test. You yeah. gradually build it up. So he gets 20 wins under his belt. There's some momentum going in towards him. He's unbeaten with 20 knockouts, whatever. Then he can start selling tickets for you at, at, a, at a main level, you know, maybe go for a belt or something like that. That's how boxing works. Now, I'm not saying that UFC's done in the same fashion, I, in fact, I'd be shocked if it is because there's a lot of corruption in boxing. You know, arguably at times a lot of it is a fix because of you know unless the big money fights, in which case they're done because either man can win and that's where the really interesting fights happen. But in UFC, I just don't think Dana. I I firmly believe Dana White will be looking here and he says I don't want Punk to lose his first match. If Punk loses his first match, the box office numbers will drop for his second fight, guaranteed. Yeah. Right. So I think that he's going to put him against their, put him against someone that he thinks legitimately Punk has got a chance of beating. So that's what I believe. Um, the one other thing that I would state as well that I, that I stated to Chris while talking to him briefly about this is that CM Punk is probably trying his best not to turn his stint with UFC into a circus attraction. Him fighting, can you imagine the headlines? Former WWE champion fights Green Power Ranger. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds kids like TV a star show. fights kids TV star. Yeah, it sounds like a circus attraction to me. Now, whether or not... I know CM Punk doesn't want that. He doesn't want that hanging over his head saying he left WWE to fight a Power Ranger. He would hate that idea, right? It's Dana White as well. Dana White's done so much work to make his company seem so legit and um, important and, you know, forefront of its field. He doesn't want these sort of silly headlines that you know people will write revolving around his company thinking that he's yeah. turning into a new age WWE in a sense right uh, just putting two guys up against each other for the sake of putting them up against each other you know because it because it's you know how it is how it is yeah uh, what's your thoughts here? I just don't I don't think this fight will ever happen I think that he's I, I, I won't got say it would, I don't. I won't. Yeah, I mean, I won't say it would never happen. But you, you, you stick, stick fair argument to like as to why it shouldn't have, be a first fight. I don't think it'll ever I, be a fight. I don't think they'll ever fight. I think they'll just have to settle it in the streets. <laughs> Rocky Five style, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, the thing is, right, the way I look at this, and I've got big respect for you know JC David Frank um, because. You know, of course we do, because we're the kids of the ninth of the Green Ranger era. Yeah, but well, not only that, like he could, like listen, right? He's not a bad fighter, right? He could kick my ass if I if I said shit in, shit to his face. So I've got to respect that, okay? If your um, leg a four year old could kick your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, part, <laughs> part part of having you know a constantly broken leg, but let's not go into that. I've been beaten up by my kids tons of times, you know. That's scary, um, but the he you know the fact is that he got into a field, um, you know. Fair, fair play to him, and he's. I just, I go whenever I think about this, I just go back to that statement. You, that you, I don't need to fight you. You need to fight me. And CM Punk will think about that with everyone that he thinks of. Um. So, but the, I, 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 the buck will stop with Dana White. Dana White will make the call, and CM Punk will have to be happy with. I mean, that. It's, it's one thing that I'm kind of not liking about Punk in this whole situ. Since that whole situation, that sort of. That's quite accurate in the sort of how he sort of overlooks things. Yeah. It's like, I don't need you. It's like, well, you're rookie. Like, greener than goose shit rookie. Yeah. That's that's the ironic thing that we always said about Punk, leading back to when he signed with UFC. First of all, his interactions since signing with UFC have made him look out to be an utter prick. There's no going way around it. Guys, you need to refer. You need to realise whether or not you like CM Punk. You can like him or not. That's fine. I like the guy. I I, I like him for his work. He is a prick. There's no getting around it. He will openly admit he's, he's an prick. arrogant prick. Yeah. yeah. There's no great way of getting around it. That's just who he is. Um, at least he's honest about being a prick. But the problem is he's a prick. You know, whether or not you like it or not. But 
the fact is with CM Punk is that he, you know, you think you hear about the stuff he he hated about part timers being in the company and him being in there working hard to get where he was and you know taking the slots away from him even though he's been working all year to get it. He's now walking into a main event box office slot in UFC, and I guarantee you all the guys around him are going to be thinking, you've just taken my fucking slot. Because yeah. you are because you are a former wrestler. Because you're what? A wrestler? Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people thought that way about Brock Lesnar. The difference is, I think a Brock lot less Ernie people is. want to start a fight with Brock Lesnar than they would CM Punk about it. Yeah. You know? um, so... And Brock didn't... And Brock earned it as well. Yeah, yeah. He didn't walk in there expecting things to be handed to him. He fought the fucking system for it yes yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah you've got to think like, he <laughs> broke new ground if you look at it that way right yeah and he put his reputation on the line much like cm punk is doing now but but you know like i said it's still brock broke that ground but looking back at looking at it now i've always said that punk wants this uh, whether or not he thinks he can become a success and you'll see and actually win a few fights is irrelevant right that he can do what he wants and obviously he's not getting into it without thinking he can win but it's. A, I still think it's a decision largely created by uh, the amount of the amount of money he's going to make from this whole venture is stupid. He's going to be very rich once all this is done. He's going to make a ton of cash. Um, you know what? And if he loses a couple of fights, realizes it's not for him, he still walks out with a with a lot of money. And you know what? For for anyone else, I'd say, well, that's your reputation damaged, and you'll always regret that. But CM Punk is one of these guys. He just doesn't give a shit if his reputation's damaged. He doesn't care. That's it. So, yeah. Uh, moving on, do you have anything else to say about CM Punk? I think we covered that in quite. No, we covered it quite well. Quite I don't. Know, we were, we spent an entire episode talking about CM Punk. So. Yeah, yeah. But basically, just in summary, I wish Jason David Frank all the best, and if he gets the fight, well done, mate, because you you just made yourself a tidy sum of money. But CM Punk and Dana White, I firmly believe both of them do not want that fight. So. There we are. Yeah. Uh, Marish Moore asks for our thoughts on Kevin Nash for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, whether we can see him going in. I don't see him going in this year, personally, because of all the shit that's going on with him at the moment. You know, getting into fights, choke slamming his son, and all that stuff. But I could definitely see him going in at some point. I, the, my only thing is whether he'll be going in as Kevin Nash or whether he'll be going in as Diesel. In a similar sort of like that um, Scott Hall went in as Razor Ramon. Yeah, I get you. Um, I think you probably see. That is a tough question, actually. Um, where we, where we would go in? I think you would go in as Nash. But with the thing is, because didn't they do? They put Razor Ramon in so they could save Scott Hall for when they put the NWO in. Oh yeah, in which case they probably would do it that way around. Um, but you know, regardless, even if they put him in as Diesel, he'll be talking like he's Kevin Nash. There's no way of getting around it. I do think he's going in. You know, I think yeah. he'll go in. I think the NWO will go in as well. Um, and I think, I think for the people, I mean, we're not big fans of, of Nash. He was never a great in-ring technician. He was never, you know, some of the moronic booking he did when he was in more creative control of WCW. He was a seven-foot guy who could punch. Yeah. But, right, here's the bottom kicker. Do you have to be a good wrestler to be in the WWE Hall of Fame? No, you don't, right? Look at Hogan. Absolutely, right? <gasps> The only thing that you have to do to get into the Hall of Fame, which actually isn't much considering some of there, but I would state to get into WWE's Hall of Fame is to make, at very least, an impact. Did Kevin Nash make an impact? You are damn right that man made an impact. He was at the forefront of one of the biggest angles in wrestling history in That's the it. NWO. And there's no getting around it. The NWO was one of the biggest angles in wrestling history. And I'm not over-exaggerating it. Honestly, it was that monumental. You look back at it now, in moments that changed wrestling forever, NWO changed wrestling forever. That's it. Right? Especially for factions as well. Yeah. Now, he's a multi-time champion, world champion in, you know, he was world champion in WWE and in WCW, so he's got the belts to back him up. Um, he was part of one of the biggest um, hot streaks in wrestling, you know, where WWE were... Uh, WWE and WCW were putting up crazy numbers. You know, you look at the numbers that that wrestling gets nowadays, and you realise, wow, it's nowhere near as hot as it used to be. No. Um. So, yeah, when you got to look at the impact that he had, it, it was monumental. And would you say the impact that he had was monumental with all those titles and and the lengthy careers had to back him up? I still think it's <coughs> worth an induction. That's my opinion. Yeah. But I don't think he's going in this year. 
it'll probably be the next couple of years, I would say. I think <coughs> maybe they might have had him plan to go in, but if this stuff with his son gets more out of hand and it gets uglier, which it definitely looks like it's it, getting that yeah, way. Yeah, it's getting that way, isn't it? Um, then WWE are going to be like, okay, you know what? We need to postpone this for a year. We need to go next year instead. Because they don't want any bad publicity leading into them. Trust me, the bad publicity means more to them than the induction itself, doing good by their former talent. They just don't want any bad, bad publicity going into it. There's a couple of rules when it comes to the Hall of Fame, one of which you need to have been out of the papers for the, for bad reasons for the entire year leading up to it. Um, you look at the whole Scott Hall and Jake the Snake thing, they had been clean and working really hard to beat their demons for a good period of time before they were yeah. inducted, right? Um, and also, you need to not own, you need to be if you're dead, you need to be the only dead person that's in that um, in that class that year because they won't put two dead people in the same class. Yeah. So that they're the kind of the the mini rules of the Hall of Fame. But do I see him going in? Absolutely. And I think yeah. It, so it's just it's a matter of time. Yeah. He, he had a big enough impact. You know, that's the way it is. Uh, he also asks myself because he lives in Ireland as well. Um, whether I watched the uh, the RTE produced Prince Devitt documentary on his last tour. Ah, no, I right. was actually going to ask you about this because oh, I was right. curious if you'd seen it. I haven't. I haven't recorded. I haven't got around That's... to watching it yet with the craziness. But whenever I flick past it, putting on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse for the little ones or anything like that, I see it and I'm like, I'm going to watch this shit out of you soon. Oh. Like, you know. Soon the children will be in bed. <laughs> you, you and me. I'll turn on the lights and I'll watch you all to myself. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> get, a bit, get a bit sorted over a TV show. Though That is the sort of stuff that I will watch just hands down all the time. And there was actually a documentary um, done about Paige's family. which I Yeah, watched. I was just about to mention it, actually, yeah. because Channel 4 did uh, Fighting in the Family or something. Yeah. Um, and they, they're they quite good for every now and then they'll pop out these these wrestling documentaries they did one on Fit Finley a couple of years ago actually and I watched that oh, one yeah. which was okay um, it wasn't huge or anything um, but it was alright giving give a bit of insult to insights into his build up and you know the WCW years and stuff like that seeing him with long hair Whew, that's that's quite weird. Anyway, um, but yeah I, I will be watching that soon and I'll, when I do I'll give, give my thoughts on it because oh I can't wait to watch it. See, when I watch it, I don't want to watch it with, you know, lots of stuff going on. I want to sink it all in and watch it properly. That's the way I want to do it. Uh, Pirate Hunter, who we answered questions on last week, reminds me that he is a male. So, okay, I apologise. It's just that one one of these weeks, I know that I'm going to naturally assume that all our listeners are male, and then I'm going to get, like, a real, like, bad message saying, you just naturally assume that I'm male, I'm not. I'm a girl, can't girls like wrestling? And I'll be (laughs) like, but, but. I was trying to, be, yeah. So that, that's the only reason why I. We get I referred to as a sexist pig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, um, and uh, we did let, we did answer a question of his before regarding the NXT report card, which I do remember actually. That was a really good question. Uh, so you're two for two, Pirate Hunter. Uh, next time you ask a question, I will remember. I promise. There you go. That's it. Um, Bazooka Machine is all up for let's talk wrestling commentaries. Told you they would be. I told you. <laughs> Might have to. Uh, and asks for our favourite and worst WWE studio movies. Ooh. Oh. This was tough. This was tough. More Considering, so... like, after... Oh, no, I've definitely got one. Go on. Worst. Yeah. Behind Enemy Lines, Columbia. Oh, that's a good one. The one that that's I could actually one. make it the whole way through. Is that the one with Mr. Anderson? Uh, I can't remember whether it was Mr. Anderson oh, or Ted DiBiase. DiBiase. Ted DiBiase, one of them, yeah. Hang on, I actually have it on DVD. Oh, so with... no! <laughs> it came in a wrestler's collection. It oh. came with the rock stand tools. So oh, that's okay. good. Okay. So you didn't go out buying it, you just came with something else. <laughs> yeah, Kennedy. Kennedy, it was Kennedy, yeah. Um, didn't you say that like it looks like it was like just done in a shack in the like, back of someone's yard or something? Oh, like yeah, that? like literally, like all they did was like, we need an open field, we need uh, 60 feet of fencing and a couple of tents. Done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. But it was like half hour in, I'm like, nope, done now. <laughs> I'd what... even rate that above the Marine. <laughs> What's your best one then? It's tied. Ties, go on. Condemned or see no evil? 
My one is condemned, and for one reason, Vinny fucking Jones. <laughs> That's why condemned is. Focus on down sunshine. Yeah, <laughs> there are so many one-liners that that guy uses in that movie that I'd... he's such a sadistic bastard as well, isn't it? I, and the fact is, we're British, so we have to like Vinnie Jones. I know you might get kicked <laughs> in the head by Vinnie Jones. That's the way it's done. Uh, so yeah, Condemned is my favourite. There's a lot of things wrong with that movie, but I just I can't. I just love it. it for the wrong reasons, it brings a smile to my face whenever I watch that movie. Yeah. The worst, however, for me is The Chaperone. Ninety minutes of unfunny, uncaring bullshit. I haven't At seen it. Every level. I never saw Knucklehead, but I'm pretty sure that would top the cake. But Chaperone was a special kind of shit. It really was. Um, and I'm a big fan of Ariel Hunter, who's you know the who was playing the the the, the you know Triple H's daughter in that. I think she does great work in Modern Family. I think she's quite funny in that. But Jesus Christ. There was nothing good about this movie. It was just bad. It just seemed like it seemed like the entire movie was an excuse for Triple H to wear very tight sh- uh, shirts and show the fact that you know he's got a bit of build to him and run around doing silly things, but not really doing silly things because you can't really get that too silly because it's Triple H. It was abysmal. I honestly, if you got, I I'm a big fan. You know this, Matt. I'm a fan of bad movies. Right? Yeah. I really I like bad movies because sometimes you can laugh at them for being so bad, right? Oh, you yeah. can't laugh at the chaperone for being so bad because it's that bad. It's just outright. You can't go you can't enjoy it being bad. It's just bad, you know? Um and they're a special kind of shit. So Fair enough. Ah the worst give us your your guys. I'd love to hear what you have to think, but Vinnie Jones is Vinnie fucking Jones, man. <laughs> you ought to calm yourself down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that is our fan feedback for this week. Um, so, yeah, thank you for all the questions there. I just realised that we spent like almost like 40 minutes already on this episode. We're not even on the Raw review yet. It's going to be a lengthy one, guys. It's going to be a lengthy one. Uh, fail of the week. This week we're talking about the Hall of Fame, and I'm going to be talking about last year's Hall of Fame. Uh, Matt, did you realise that Mr. T loves his mother? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> like, just, I think he's he's a real he's a real father's son sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so our photo of the week is Mr. T's Hall of Fame induction speech. Speech. Um, so he, so first of all, Mr. T was inducted, and we said back then when we talked about it that we don't have an issue if there's going to be a celebrity wing, Mr. T should be in there. He wrestled the first WrestleMania main event. He has, to, he has to be in there if you do it, right? I'm not and keen. it's Mr. T. And it's Mr. T, right? It's like, if you're going to have a celebrity wing, right, and the whole conversation of if there should be a celebrity wing will leave to another date because that will be lengthy as shit. Um, if there is going to be a celebrity wing, Mr. T should be in there. There's a few names that should be in there. Mr. T is one of them, right? Yeah. Um, so fair enough. That's okay. So he has a rightful claim. Um, he's a national TV icon. You know, he's a household name. We all know him from the A-Team, you know, going from there. and uh, Pretty much just the A-Team. And Snickers adverts, of course, which yeah. I don't know if you get over in America for our American listeners. But there's tons of adverts over here of him pelting people with Snickers and telling them to get some nuts. Man up, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, quite odd, but he does what he does to get work, shall we say. Um, he does a TV show over here. Does he? What show does he do? Uh, crazy Fools. He basically does like American, like British home videos, but it's just referred to as Crazy Fools. I haven't even seen that. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, for basically, you've been framed for anyone. That yeah, you've that. been framed. You've been a crazy fool. Okay, fair enough. Um, did you just say fool a lot in that show? I'm guessing. He yeah, does. everyone is referred to as a fool. Oh, okay, there you are. <laughs> it sounds like a really bad show. <laughs> Just hearing it. It's uh, it's it's a bit bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So the whole induction sounds like a great thing to do, and it was. Um. So he decided, you know, to do the ultimate mama's boy thing, and he's there with his award, and and you know, very very happy, and um, he decides to pay homage to his mother, which yep. I think is a great thing to do. You know, real real <laughs> good guy. The problem is he spends, I think, about over 20 minutes paying homage to his mother and telling everyone else to pay homage to their mothers. That's it. Um, to the point that Kane had to be sent out to stop his speech, which was not planned. 
And oh, no. um, basically, then Mr. T realised, oh shit, I've been talking about this for 20 minutes. Okay, bye bye, everyone. Even said thank you for the award yet. Yeah. <laughs> Just thank you, my mother, all this time. Was it? He said uh, on on Father's Day, I, I I love my mother, and Confederate's Day, and Easter, That's it. and Christmas Day. And Every Jesus day is a Mother's Day. Yeah. So he loves his mum. I think that's much for is is definitely for sure. But the very fact that WWE actually like auto tuned his voice and made a song out of this speech kind of shows you how much they cared for the entire thing. Um, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, out of all the Hall of Fame induction speeches, there's been, you know, a few here that have been a bit, you know, boring. This wasn't boring. It was captivating, but for all the wrong reasons. Um, so that's why it's our fail of the week, because Mr. T, is the fact you love your mother is not a fail. It's just the fact you you spent way too much time talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's now here a point. I love his mother. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. You know what? I think I love his mother, too. That's it. Uh, it's a shame. Yeah. Uh, so, the funny thing about this, right, before we exit off this, is that the one thing I was waiting for him to do was to actually reference the matches that he had, you know, in, in, in WWE, in reference, you know, being that WrestleMania 1 at this birth of this fantastic thing. There wasn't really Tears anything about Hogan, that. yeah. You know, it was more like, I love my mum. So, humble, I guess, humble. Yeah. We can't rag at them too much, you know? Let's, That's it. Let's do anything. <laughs> Um, and I pity the for anyone who dislikes Mr. T. His mother. Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, our Raw review this week is the Christmas edition of Monday Night Raw. This is not the last episode, but it will be the the last LTW, you know, because obviously we cover it a week afterwards. That's it. Um, so Christmas edition. Last year they went with uh, the Alberto Del Rio running over Santa Claus, if you remember all that. Uh, yeah. Uh, or it might have been the year before or something along those lines. I I know you're going, ugh, yeah? I actually really like that show. The reason being is because they actually were a bit silly. They kind of did a, a kind of like a WWE special where they just went all Christmassy and they didn't care about storylines for one week. They were just doing things as they were. And I was kind of hoping they would do the same this week because, let's face it, <coughs> I think everyone is burnt out of the mid-month of min- um, mediocrity. Yeah, that WWE doing, and it's and at the moment it stinks a lot of them tying stuff over until the Royal Rumble happens, and then the real plans for WrestleMania will start kicking in. So I hoped that they would go all out. They didn't this year. It was another normal. It was basically what I like to call a Christmas themed episode of Raw, rather yeah. than a Christmas special of Raw. That's it. Uh, well, they, yeah, because I mean, those who were referring to the Alberto one, it's like the day Alberto stole Christmas sort of thing, wasn't it? Yeah, and you've got to remember they had like loads of cheesy segments. Oh, God, that must have been two years ago, because Alberto wasn't driving cars last year. Yeah, yeah. I, I just remember it. I can't remember what the Christmas one last yeah. year was. I, I know there was one like it, and I actually really enjoyed the show. Some people might sla- slam it, but come on. Every chance of WWE during their normal routine does a special. I'm all up for it because it's something different. We I even praised the Slammies to some degree, even though it was a bit of a farce. Because at least it was something a bit different, you know? WWE, if he wants to be treated like a television show, which I'll get into later on this week because I'm going to slam them for that as well. Um, if they want to be treated like a tev- television show, then every now and then they've got to do specials. You know, they've got to do, you know, even soaps do specials every now and then. You know, you've got the Christmas Day special, Easter special, stuff like this, you know. That's it. So, it just makes sense. Um, so, yeah, just so before we start up, it came from Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know, always get that where it's coming from first. And the crowd were okay at the beginning of the show, but as always, three hours is a long time to be sitting down. And towards the end of the show, they really didn't care that much. So we're really going to be put to our test, to our, through our paces, aren't we? In April, Ugh. it'll be it'll be awesome. It'll be fun. It'll be you, great. You, you we'll be part, no, the thing is, we'll be part of a UK crowd, and UK crowd never tires. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it'll be fun anyway. I tell you what, like a lot of these people, and they may not be making a lot of noise. So I'm not guarantee. I'm not stating they're not having at least a bit of fun. You know, they. Yeah. You know, these live events are always you know, good to go to and stuff like that. I'd actually, I'd actually think that sometimes the non-televised events are a little bit more interactive that way you can get back. The to house it. shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but still, you know, it's still good to go to. If you've got, if you've got money to go to a live raw, go. There's no reason why you shouldn't go. Just go. Um, as we do, as we're going on, on April, just to drop that as well. 
quite excited. Yay! Yeah. Uh, show starts off with Ho Ho Hogan. I just hate the fact that it wasn't Saint Mick. Saint, yeah, come on. Hogan cannot take Santa Claus. That will forever in the fans' heart belong to Mick Foley. So, so yeah. That's it. Especially considering it's someone who, like, was recently before Hell in a Cell was just like, this is like the 320th day that I've worn something with Santa on it. Yeah. It's just like everyone in the WWE universe knows that Mick Foley is a massive Santa freak. Yeah. yeah. And he is Santa to us, you know? You yeah. Know, those WWE shop, like, uh, things that he's been doing, he's been gold. He's just been amazing. I loved it. That's it. And it's like, nah. <laughs> Hogan. Yeah, Hogan. Ho, ho, Hogan. As I dropped this name to our uh, gaming crew, they laughed out loud, and it was one of those moments that I was a bit a bit ashamed to be. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so, yeah, one of the things I thought was quite funny about this is that, uh, obviously, Hogan normally rocks the uh, the 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 yellow and red. Now he's rocking the, the, the red and white, you know, different colours there. Uh, King, I saw Kings get up here. I had to applaud the guy. Yeah, he at very least went all Christmas on it. That was garish, wasn't it? It was. It was um, interesting. I think is probably the best word. It was. It was out there. It was out there. I salute him for it anyway. Um, the the crowd starts cheering for Hogan, but then he corrects them all to chant "Ho Ho Hogan," which they do. Yeah. Um, fair play to them for at least you know getting into the spirit and all that. Um, he explains the night's matches because we know Vince needs his hook, you know, so Ho Ho Hogan gives us the, the hook that we needed, even though they explained all the prior matches before Hogan came, came out, and I thought that was more than sufficient, but there we are. Yeah, no. Nope. We need him to do it. This brings out John Cena. John Cena, he says, uh, I want another Christmas uh, treat for you, you know. Um, I want Seth Rollins. I've been a good boy this year. Yeah, I've been a good boy. Uh, I thought that maybe uh, Santa would give Cena another title shot for Christmas. You know? Either that, or he'll give him a collection of crackers where he can get his jokes from next year. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Uh, no, actually, no, that's that's the way Seamus gets his jokes. It seems a little bit better. So, you know what? I've actually... I, I'm kind of glad Seamus has been off TV these weeks because I haven't had to deal with all that horrible comedy. But uh, there we are. Uh, so I can see, hardly say I've missed him. Who shit? No, I haven't missed him at all, to be honest. But there we are. Here we go, guys. This is going to be the last episode of, <coughs> of LTW for this year. And we're going to bring back a few classic catchphrases for you this year. And the first of which is this. Cena firmly places his tongue upon Santa's butthole. Oh, yeah. We have to bring that one back. That's an early one. Yeah, from the early days. Um, and asks for a frozen sing-along playset. Cena, I've got enough frozen shit in my house. You can have one of mine, okay? Just take it. Take. You can have all my other frozen stuff. Have it all. There you go. Ugh. See, now, if you want frozen stuff, you should have come here. Um... He says he won't whine about losing last week, but he wants a rematch against Rollins. Uh, as we say, Rollins now has the Cena effect. If you say his name, he will come out. Uh, so Seth Rollins does come out. He says no one wants to hear his stupid voice, but then praises both Cena and Hogan for their work. But Rollins' time is now. Your time is up. His time is now. You, know. you can't see me. You can't see me. Uh, he moans that again that the authority aren't in power. Instead, we have Ho Ho Hogan. Um, I all, all I can think of this here when when Rollins is is ragging on Hogan that all all Rollins needs to do is pay the services of a certain man who has already stunned a Santa Claus in a ring before. <laughs> yeah. Mister Austin stunned Santa Claus. So um, is that in our intro? I think that is in our intro. That is yeah. Yeah, well, there you are. Um, stunned Santa Claus. I still remember that. That's awesome. It's a, that Santa was a bit of a prick though. He deserved this stuff. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, remember how, so you remember all the stuff that he's coming up, oh, this is the reason why the authority aren't in, but it's because the vigilante sting, you know, he's not just sting, he's the vigilante sting. You remember how Paul Heyman spent about six months referencing Brock Lesnar destroying the streak, right? Week after yeah. week. And you know me, we're big Heyman fans, but we're like, come on, you know, we get it by now, it's overdoing it to this point. <laughs> Yeah. He, he broke the streak. We we were there. We watched it. We were just as shocked as everyone else. Um, and he spent all that time doing it. It seems that Rollins is now doing that for Sting. He's now reminding everyone, the only reason the authority is because of the vigilante Sting. 
or the vigilante known as Sting, as they're saying. Yeah, um, he's going to. I be... quite like they're re- they're referring to him as to him as the vigilante because I guess they can't really refer to him as the icon or anything like that. At least they can. Well, mm, yeah, no. Yeah, I think they can, but that's just me. Uh, maybe that's being a bit pedantic. I I, I agree, but. Uh, it's like a little bit when you know Kate, when Kane was around and they, they, they just constantly kept referring to him as the Demon Kane. You you never hear Kane without Demon in front of it. That's like, it. Well, no, I think it's I think it's more like because the icon is sort of WCW TNA. No, nah, no, nah. I I I, I, don't, I don't see too much of an issue with them not with with them using icon, but they want to go with the, the whole story that that Sting is like you know he's this vigilante and all that stuff there but yeah this is the way they do it you know it, it seems very <laughs> scripted when over and over everyone on the roster whenever they refer to sting they always refer to him as the vigilante sting you know yeah. it's over and over. it seems scripted to me um you know they can't say that vigilante you know that came in you know the icon sting you know they can still refer to him as a vigilante if they want to but they just they yeah. do it in a certain way uh, but yeah, every week now it seems that Rollins is going to remind us until Sting obviously returns that they call, that he's the one who cost the authority. So he's doing the Heyman role as, it, as it's now known. Yeah. Uh, Rollins wants a Christmas f- uh, present in the form. By the way, everyone on this show wants wants a Christmas present, and they always say it's in the form of something that they actually want. And they just say, "Oh, my Christmas present this year is blah blah." blah I want a Christmas present. <sighs> I want a Christmas present. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Seems like everyone wants Christmas presents on this show. In terms of matches, they probably would have already had that week. So, yeah, you know, ask for a, ask for a next gen console, guys. You know, get something good. You know, that's it. Um, I want peace on earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that would that would be a change of uh, of heart if Rollins decided he wanted that. But you know. <laughs> uh, Hogan sets up Rollins versus Cena to kick off the show. And um, it became painfully aware as this um, segment went through that WWE aren't giving me my Christmas special that I wanted. But sad Tony is sad. Sad Tony is. Sad. You know what? I actually quite like this match. Oh, well, I, I think the match I thought was very high quality between the pair of them. I just like. Uh, I I I think I got my hopes up a bit too much. I thought they were going to have a silly special Christmas episode, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't get it. But there we are. Um, it's just just raw with a couple of Christmas trees. Just raw with yeah, with a, with a couple of trees and a you know a few little theme here and there, but there yeah. And occasionally just like the, the only part that I really remember for like as a backstage segment really is just like they just show a reef and Kane just walks in front of it like standard like record skipping like sound effects and just like bar humbug. So, yeah, like where uh, was there really a joke there to be had? Um, that happened after this match. We will reference it now, but yeah, yeah. it was like they 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 put in like a payoff to a joke, and they forgot to add the joke. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was so random. I just didn't understand what was going on there. Like honestly, why did they think that would that would work? I have no idea why they would have booked that. Just some things that are just a bit odd, anyway. But the match, as you say, it was. I thought it was very high quality. The problem is that. I thought about it is that we've seen these guys wrestle three weeks, well, three matches in a row, right? Yeah. First was a tables match. You go up from that to a cage match, and now we're at a singles match. Yeah. Yeah, there's something wrong with the way that's booked to me. And to, to me, it's booked the wrong way around. Like, but... there's, there's, a, there's a stipulation problem here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the only thing that... I, could, I, I can't blame people for not getting too much into this match. Even though the match, as, as, we, as you said there, I thought it was really, really good. Um, is that I can't blame people for not getting into it because, you know, oh, why is this so special? Last week you saw them wrestle in a cage. Now we're just seeing them do it without it. Yeah. Um, I can't blame generic fans for thinking that way. Um, but I actually thought this match was probably better than the one they had in the cage. Um, to a degree. Yeah, I'm, I'm sometimes a sucker for good singles matches without any sort of stipulations you look at some of the best matches that i i've always huge into um you know your favorite match of all time matt is Shawn michaels undertaker that was a singles match a straight up singles match yeah, yeah. um so you know i i've got a love for the singles. one match. of yours is well it's a singles match with a submission match but yeah 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 it's got a bit of story a story in there but uh so i, I won't really claim that in there you say one of mine. That is my favourite match of all time. Yeah. Austin, Bret Hart, WrestleMania 13. Um, which, you know, I'm going to have to go watch that again soon, I think. 
I must have watched that match. Well, if only we had the network. Mm, mm. Fuck you, WWE. There you go. <laughs> tons of new, ca- tons of catchphrase coming back just for one, one. Week. That's it. For the end of the year. Yeah, that's it. So here we are. So this match happens. There's a lot of interference, but Cena overcomes the odds as he does, and he gets the convincing and clean <laughs> victory over Rollins. And we're reminded that Vince really doesn't want new stars because he has Cena. And That's it, makes, it makes me wonder a little bit how many pushes will Cena take eat next year. Uh, as many as Vince thinks is needed is the answer to that question. Yeah. Uh, I'm before people get to I'm not that upset at the fact that Rollins lost because I think the guy does look main event more down to his own performance than anything else. And he has been protected far better than a lot of the roster. So you can hardly feel bad for him having one loss to Cena here. But it's a little bit once you know, for a guy who gets beaten so clean and convincingly against Cena, not on pay-per-view either, a little bit of damage done to him there. I just don't think it's not nearly enough. I think enough Rollins has been built up enough to take that, at least. Yeah. Not ideal. I wouldn't have Cena beat him, but... They want to build him up for Lesnar. J and J. Yeah, they want to build him up for Lesnar, don't they? So they're going to make him yeah, beat a lot of people. My argument is there's a lot of people on the roster. He could be and still, he'd still be okay, but... Got all no, those people. The last time that happened, he just stormed through the Wyatt family. Oh no! Well, no, I, I wouldn't think the Wyatt family would be okay to go through, but but there we go. It doesn't matter. Uh, our hero Kane, yeah, he appears up. He's still our hero, by the way, for what he did last week. I was kind of hoping he would give us a Christmas present and do it again. Although we did actually get a um, a viewership later on the show of him tombstoning the bunny again on SmackDown. I say we got a replay. <laughs> if, if they are advertised in the future, that guaranteed. That would happen. I would have watched SmackDown that week. Definitely. Just for a buddy tombstone. Oh yeah, definitely. I would have watched it. I'd watch it each week. The show would go up in quality each week if I could see that bunny get tombstone. So yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Maybe there's something wrong with me there. Who knows? Maybe maybe I enjoy it a bit too much. But I can guarantee that a lot of people enjoyed it when you turned tombstone in the first time. You loved it last week, Matt. I did so, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Fandango against Swagger. Uh, both I will been... be brutally honest here. Go on. I fast forward did the match. Okay, I don't blame you. Um, the reason being, both men got the job at entrance, and it shows how much WWE really care about these guys, and in turn, how much you care about it, and obviously me as well. I watched the match because. Well, I, I saw some of it. I saw like, oh, like literally opening up into like his um, sort of belly to back suplex, and I'm just like, mm, done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Oh, we got to win. Don't care. Yeah, I mean, Fandango gets the victory. It's a very quick victory. It's a nothing match at best. Um, every time he does that top rope leg dro- drop, he always look at like his body, his body movement and the way he's looking always makes me think that he's scared of ripping the fuck out of his hamstring every single time he does that. Like yeah. he he is scared of just like twanging it every single time he drops it. He's gonna need a new finisher because I, I guarantee you. Um, He's, he's he does look scared of his own finisher, doesn't he? Yeah, and I don't I don't blame him, right? Because you can wreck your hip. Look at look at Hulk Hogan, like he let jobs tons of people throughout his career, and he basically doesn't have a lower half of his body. <laughs> you know, yeah. like look how gingerly he gets in and out of the ropes. I mean, it's yeah, you see with loads of people, just sort of like where their finisher is actually more devastating to themselves. I mean, look at Ray. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so there's um. Yeah, he will need a new finisher that's going around. If you want a new improved. The fact is that, you know, unless he can get over it and he can leg drop these guys with conviction, um, he always looks like he's just scared of fucking up his legs as he does it. I don't think his frame, his body shape helps in that in any factor as well. So, there we go. Uh, Ziggler is backstage being interviewed regarding the Intercontinental title match. That is later on in the night. Uh, Ziggler calls Harper a nightmare come to life. A psychopath. Uh, but he'll need no Christmas miracle to beat Harper. He's just too good. I thought this was short and sweet, but I love the fact that they gave Ziggler a bit of time on the mic, considering most most weeks he just doesn't get anything on the, on the mic. I just love that they're giving... It's, yes, with Ziggler, but then it's also it's just like... You know, we were talking, like, this could be the start of, like, the IC title actually having some credibility. And it's like... Like, they... Like, the IC title, later on tonight. Later on tonight. And it's just like... That was actually quite a way into the night. Yeah, yeah. And they were happily just shouting about it, saying how it's going to happen. Yeah. 
We got a promo. We got an actual promo from both from both guys, and plus loads of like little bits of just like late. Don't forget later on tonight, more IC title matches. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I know what you mean. Like they they positioned it in a fashion that it could be built up at very least a small amount, and they got paid off for that. You know, we'll we'll go into that match later on, obviously, but. They should make a, a big deal about these title matches. You know, the amount of times we've seen random uh, IC and US title matches made out of nowhere with little care to the the rivalry or the feud or the or the, the championship. Or, you know, sometimes people would win it and they wouldn't even care. You know, it's just they even booked so wrong. Uh, if, they, if they're going to really... We've said this before. How many times have we said this? If they're going to start taking these belts seriously, then the, the actual way that WWE look at those belts needs to change. Um, yeah. Hopefully that has happened, but we say it every every time, and we're proved otherwise. So keep our. Th- I did like. I, I I do agree with you though. The way they presented this title match was good. You know, I I I liked it. The fact that they gave both men some time. Um, like it could have been the main event. Yeah. The amount that they that they gave it. Yeah. I I I probably would have put it in that slot. I think it was worthy of being in there personally. But there we are. Uh, Adam Rose and R Truth. Um, so. Uh, the bunny is coming down with a neck brace after being tombstoned, you know, twice in a week. Yep. Um, which Kane is still our hero for. Um, if we could pull together the average length of all Adam Rose matches, they would definitely be under 60 seconds. This match was under 60 seconds. With a devastating roll-up pin with R-Truth getting the victory over Adam Rose. Yep. Um... As we know, the most devastating finishing move in history. I told you guys, they're all coming before back. We, before we forget about our truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, so devastating, most devastating move of all time. Um, gets the victory here. After the match, Adam Rose then spine busts the bunny to hell. And it gives me a reminder that Adam Rose actually has one of the best spine busters in the entire roster. Yeah! I forgot he was that good at giving that move. He may not be. He's like on. He's not on like Double A on Anderson, but it's a very close. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sexy spine buster, I have to say. Uh, and then he gives the, uh, the the bunny a bit of a kicking. Um, it's a shame that all of Adam. Oh, I say a shame. I'd much rather him. You say a kick it like he probably like rips the brace off and chucks. Like whoever's inside that bunny threw himself against that barricade <laughs> in a hard way. Apparently, it's Hunico. You know, for apparently the, was... the thing is, I've heard Hunico, but then apparently it's also been Justin Gabriel. Or... It could be anyone. That we could be anyone. It it's a matter. bunny suit. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> yeah, like it is quite hilarious because, like, as you say, he just like just tosses them all around. You know, throws them, it throws them all over the place. Um. And, like... I, I find that I find this funny because this is the first time in weeks that we've actually sort of almost sounded passionate about Adam Rose. Adam, yeah, we. I'm just passionate because it looks like he's going crazy. Could this be Kruger? <laughs> just come back as Kruger for a week and just destroy the bunny. Just, just destroy this gimmick and get it out of our way. Uh, we, we, we've named Adam Rose the Black Plague of segments. And this week, he, he watching him beat up the bunny was was enjoyable. I have to say, and that spine buster, as I said, was fucking sexy as shit. So, um, he timid thumbs up for Adam Rose but only because he wasn't acting like Adam Rose this week you know he was acting more yeah. Leo Kruger as you say um, there we go but um, yeah this will probably lead to a Bunny versus Rose match in which case the Bunny will probably win I know that's quite sad for all you guys but uh, the height of Adam Rose's career to date would state you know him versus the Bunny the uh, the you know the, the, the heights of his career right there you know the very that's top it. of the mountain the things that come out of my mouth while on this show, huh? <laughs> oh. uh, big show against... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Are you dying? You know? A little bit. You're a little, you're a little bit sick? Little are you bit. okay to continue? You I'm good to go. go. <laughs> uh, big show versus Roman Reigns. Um, this, snore. Yeah, this was a snore fest. It was a... Well, I say it was a snore. Um, the end of it was at the very least exciting. Uh, mainly because of Roman Reigns. I would state that Roman Reigns was the most entertaining part of this match. But there we are. It got a boring chart, though, because last por- large portions of the match were essentially Big Show beating up Roman Reigns very slowly. Yeah? And yeah, I mean, the worst part is, like, from, like, it was that mostly when sort of Big Show stuck him in a chokehold. It's just like... Yeah. This isn't the sort of pace that we want. Yeah, yeah. Now, that some people might say this, okay, you know, 
what do you expect them to do? You know, you want more map-based technical wrestling, which we do. But fans nowadays, they want quicker and hard-hitting wrestling, right? They want moves that are quick and impactful. That's why the super kick always gets a response. You know, they, yep. they, everyone uses the fucking super kick nowadays. Why you, you're seeing very hard and impactful clotheslines get huge responses. Mm. Right? They want. There stuff... was definitely one that night. Mm, weren't there? Um, that's the type of wrestling they want. They want impactful moves, but they want it at a good pace, right? That's the sort of wrestling that fans, the generic fans nowadays want. They do not want to watch a chokehold for a minute. That to them is not exciting, that's not entertaining. It may be to me and Matt, which it still wasn't here on this match because no, still I just reckon Big Show is blowing out. Yeah, yeah. Or he's too busy uh, mouthing response. How many times have we seen Big Show? He doesn't exactly keep quiet with his uh, his talking with his other guy in the ring. Yeah. Seen at Big Show matches have been like just ripped to hell by Botchamania because you can just see, you can hear every move they're doing. You know, uh, it's, it's crazy. But um, yeah. That's the type of wrestling that, that fans want nowadays. And what was quite strange about this match is that Reigns gets a rally. He fights Big Show on the outside. And then instead of saying, okay, I want to beat this guy legit, like a John Cena would do, he just comes into the ring and lets Big Show get counted out. Now, for all the stuff that they've done to make Reigns look strong, which is the you know the, the way they go. Don't around, forget, make Reigns look strong. Make Reigns look strong. This is a bit of an odd way for him to get a victory over the guy. The yeah. one thing I think, though, is that what they're doing is that they're giving him a victory here so he can wrestle him again and get a clean victory down the line. That's the way I think they're going with it. Because Makes sense to me. They've got a lot of weeks now into a Royal Rumble. They've got me a much more... Like, they only had three Raws between Survivor Series and TLC. They've almost got double, you know, that leading into... Really? Yeah. Leading into Royal Rumble no. at the end of January. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we've already we've already had two since um, since you know the last oh, God, yeah. so yeah uh, so they they're trying to fill it out they're trying to fill out three hours for a lot more weeks than they than than they normally have for a pay per view you know um, which you think wouldn't be an issue because you've got like end of year ones you've got Christmas episodes it should be fine but the problem is WWE are going let's just do our usual stuff each week so they're basically stretching everything out. So if he got a clean victory over Big Show this week, where do they go from there? So that's why I, why I think they did it this way. But still, it is a bit of an odd way for Roman Reigns, their next big star, you know, to win a victory like that. Take a win, yeah. But you know what? You know, some in in the other breadth as well. Maybe the thing is right. I try and trying to find positive in it and say, well, maybe they're trying to go a more believable route. Roman Reigns isn't an idiot. You know, you get a victory any way you can against a guy that big, right? Yeah. Fair enough, but. WWE logic isn't all we can't exactly go by that same logic because WWE logic is like all over this show so we can't really go by that logic you know it's we can't go what was it consistency was one of our theme words a couple of weeks ago we can't say oh fair enough to Roman Reigns doing this when they do it for Cena does it all the time going and oh, I want to beat him in the proper way and it's like oh, okay. but there we are yeah um so this leads to Dean Ambrose having a interview with Renee Young uh, he tells Young that he's been a good year. He's he's been a good boy this year. Sorry. He's been a good year. He's been a good year tire. That's what he's been. Um, that reminds me of a funny joke I heard ages ago. But anyway, um, but he's been a good boy. You know, stealing hot dog carts and arming sludge bombs inside of suitcases. Yeah, of course. Good boy. Good boy. Good things to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind him being a bad guy, but I definitely don't think he's a good guy either. You know? That's it. Uh, so. He asks for his present, you know, uh, his match. He already got his present, which is his match with Bray Wyatt. And um, basically, that's the, so the, the the gist of what he gets. I'm but still, I want another one. He wants another one. More matches with Bray Wyatt, even though they mean nothing. Um, but we're going to later on. I, I much preferred um, Dolph Ziggler's like, pre-match interview than this one. I thought that had more to it. Dean Ambrose at the moment, his current deal is starting to wear a bit thin and maybe he needs to tweak that a little bit i think a lot of the appeal that he had before was this unbridled rage that he had towards people but in the storyline that he's in there still is no answers to what's going on there it's just two people fighting so yeah it makes him just seem it's just a bit worthless i'm going to go into big reasons why that i've actually looked into it this week 
I think I know the reason why this isn't working. So I'll go into that later. Okay. Because I had a match later on in the show. Yeah. Because as we said before, you and me were like, it's not working. We can't figure out why. I think we I just couldn't get in. We yeah, because we couldn't get into the TLC match. Yeah. We were like, it should work. It should work, but it doesn't. And I'll go into it. So, Brie Bella next against Natalia. Oh, yeah. Get ready, oh, guys. Nice. Strap yourselves in. It's total divas time. They're back. It's going to be back on. We're going to have loads of storylines invading our weekly wrestling show. So, are you ready, Matt? Are you ready for total divas? <sighs> I'm ready for a bullet to the head. <laughs> you don't want to know, you know, if these, you know, you know these girls, like, jostling to get the best out of their personal lives and no i don't really want to know how brie mode is like what brie says when she's a little bit drunk oh look how fun i am i I fell over a little bit she obviously has never been with us on a drinking night there you go so (laughs) let's get ltw mode up in this (laughs) yeah um so the thing is here with this match i thought this match was good It wasn't terrible. Stop the presses, guys. Woo! Jesus Christ. I thought this match, it was a little bit quick, but I thought it was quite crisp. And I thought that a lot of the times when we watch matches like these, these girls can be sloppy. But this match, I thought, had some good impact to it. Um, Had some good wrestling to be had in it. um, Which I'll take, you know, honestly. The fact is, you've got Brie Benner and Italia in there. These are two long-standing girls uh, on you know women sorry on the roster that have been on there for a long time you'd expect them to be able to do at very least a decent match and that's what they gave us there this week yeah. so no fair play to them um so nikki tries to come in after the match which um which natalia gets the the victory for um but natalia literally knocks her straight off and then poses with the belt man i it's been a long time one of the things that i disliked about natalia as a character is that she's too nice you know, she comes off like that. If one thing that they can do with this Total Divas is give her an on raw personality of being a little bit more ruthless. Yeah. I'm all for it. It wouldn't be a terrible thing. Yeah, I'm all for it. It looked like Tyson Kidd was turned on by it all. Honestly, he was like, yeah, do it. Yeah, sure. You know, what's the, the one thing that makes their marriage work is Natalia being a bitch. You know, I'm all for that, you know. But, if that's what he likes. Yeah, that's what he Same. likes. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't, by all means, I don't want Natalia to go heel. I still want it to be face. But I don't want to take any prisoners. You know? Do it. Do it this way. I thought the way they, they did it this week, making it look like a, a title contender, I thought that was that was okay, honestly. I thought that was pretty good to watch. Um, at, there's so many times that we see Natalia on commentary going, oh, the girls do such a great job, and, you know, we're working so hard to make the best of ourselves. No. You take what you get, you know? but it would, I think she needs to get in title contention again. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, like... What was it back in the day you know, when Vince liked to talk about his ruthless aggression? That certainly isn't ruthless aggression. All oh, the girls are doing great. We're working so hard. And I'm so happy for her winning the belt. No, it should be, okay, she's won the belt. I'm taking it from her, regardless of whether I like her or not. That's it. That should be what it is. But there we are. Hasn't been that way for a while. I hope that the whole division gets a little bit less goody two-shoes. And I'm not saying bitchy, but ambitious, determined. Every single girl on that roster should be booked as if they want that belt. And yeah. nothing else. That's it. So, oh god, I'll just look what's next, Matt. Are you what? ready? No. Ascension promo number two. Oh uh, yeah. We said before that we did not like their first one. I'm going to say it right now. I hated the two. They did. I really. It's time to battle up and ride the lightning. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I could picture you shaking your no. head. I really could. I was like, Matt's going to be like. It's like we were talking last week. Like I could have done a so much better job at creating a vignette for them. Yeah. Like the worst part is, I was thinking about this. I wouldn't have them come out yet. I wouldn't have them debut yet. Okay, what would you do? Tell me how would you, how would you? Because I already said what well, the vignette I said they would do was like a Walking Dead style. I'd like the vignette. Like yeah. if we went for that, if they were to come, if they were to debut next week, which they are, yeah, then yeah, that vignette works. Yeah, but what would but, how how would you do it? How would you book the? These are your guys. You've been so behind the ascension. How would you build the tag team as champions, tag champs? Build them strong. Yeah, and then just have the ascension just turn up, wipe the floor with them. What, in a non-title match? Which in a non-title, not even in a non-title match, in an attack. Yeah, in an attack, yeah. And I mean decimation, you mean. Destroy like, them. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Like Brock Lesnar's star when he first debuted. That would be That's pretty it. cool, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, a different way of going around it. I, I personally would have... I would... I, I would have gone with all those vignettes and I would have debuted them against lesser talent first of all, but because I'm a little bit more conventional like that. But no, I obviously there's certainly merits to that. I mean, if they were going to do it, they would have to go full out destruction if they were to come in and destroy the champions. Yeah. And I mean, tables, chairs, everything. They would have to make it uncomfortable. Like NXT debut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but not this way. <laughs> this way is getting really hokey. Um and I don't like it at all. Uh, as always, still, even though the two segments this week were shocking, I I, I did not like them at all. When they slowly rise up on the floor and then suddenly they become anim- animated, slapping each other, and then they're like, "Oh, let's ride the lightning!" and we are the ascension. Is just I don't like it at all. I just want just like just copy and paste NXT onto Raw. <laughs> It's not hard to do. It's not hard. I res- I, res- I mean, okay, I reserve all judgment until Monday, but... It's not looking good, though, is it? Not hold, yeah, exactly. There's not a lot of hope in it. Yeah. Let us know, guys, which one you would like. Uh, at the moment, to me, it looks a bit campy. To me. The Ascension looks campy. There's something wrong with that. It might just be the face paint. No, I think the whole deal of it is the way that they're, they're kind of ca- getting over, the way they're talking. I just think it looks... Let's not go there. Not I don't there. know. It's like you would, you'd expect Connor in the background just to do the whole sort of... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn twiddles. <laughs> just be the classic bad guys, you know. Fools again. Anyway. Talking of tag teams. Golden Stardust against Los Christmas Dores. Oh, yeah. Came out with a Christmas theme. Um, Stardust is now looking like a gremlin with his green get-up. Um, going around, you know, stealing people's presents and such. Um, if he wanted any more creepy notches on his Orion's belt, he's he's getting them. He's finding a way <laughs> to get a different style of creepy whenever he comes out. Um, I'm just saying that his his bedroom life must be bizarre at the best of times. But <clears throat> let's not go into that. Uh, El Torito is actually in this match. It's a three on. Yeah, two it's a handicap. two and a half on two match. Yeah. Um, and he gets uh, tagged in at the end of the match. I would take the silly nature of this match with the whole El Torito stuff if they had gone with that theme from the very beginning and done a proper Christmas special of Raw. But because they didn't, I can look at this like I normally do, in which case it's just dumb. Yep. Okay. Um, basically, the, the match is all, all right. It's missable. Um, the match ends with El Torito getting the pinfall victory over... I think it's Goldust. Yeah, Goldust. Yeah. And you look at the way that Goldust and Stardust were built up um, to become uh, tag team champions. Um, good heels, had great matches with Usos, until obviously they ran out of ideas for them. You know? Um, and now they're losing to Los Matadores. Now they're, yeah. they're losing to El Torito. Um, well, yeah. That, that's that's the, the bottom of it. I I wonder why both teams exist because they're existing for the sake of existing. Um, it seems nowadays what they tend to do with the Rhodes brothers is that they give them a real big push when things, when they get a plan with them because they're great wrestlers and they could do good work for you. And then they just don't come up with anything and they just let, let them wallow away. Los Matadores have never had a plan behind them ever. No. And when, when it has been, it's been revolved. Just about to turn up and go Ole. Yeah. Just go back to being Epico and Primo. You'd be just as irrelevant and, I, and, and, and a hell of a lot less annoying. And I, yeah, exactly. You'd be le- you'd be as irrelevant, and I wouldn't hate you as much. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there we go. However, way. have you seen the video on YouTube of craziest wrestling move ever? No. Where it's like a head scissors that just keeps on going and going and going. Oh no, I haven't seen that. There's a lot of moves you put craziest move ever, and just comes up with loads of other stuff. But it's about fifty seconds long. It's basically of this midget doing this head scissors like flip. Sort of starts with a head scissors, then flips around into another head scissors, and just goes round and round and round and round and round for about thirty seconds before flipping them out of the ring. <laughs> it was El Torito who did it. Yeah, I'm not saying the guy is a bad wrestler. In fact, he's fantastic. But I, do, I was a little bit shocked because I like I never watched the WLC match. Oh but... yeah, well, it was on a pre-show anyway. 
Yeah, it was on a pre-show, but it's like that actually looks rather impressive. <laughs> you know, like they, they can like even Hornswoggle can wrestle to some sort of degree, but WWE wants to use them as a joke. They've been booked yeah. out like a joke, and it's not like oh, oh guys, you're going, you're being mean towards the little people because you don't believe that they should get victories over the big guys. No, it's not like that. WWE well, are yeah. booking it like it, so it should be. Oh well, yeah, we do kind of believe that as well, but. Not in offence to them. We still think they're good wrestlers or anything along those lines. But the way WWE is, is looking at it is that they're booking these guys like a junk, right? They're yeah. booking them and saying, oh, look at these guys. They got beaten by Alterita. Oh, look how bad these guys are. There's something wrong with that, okay? And that's, that's the way about it. It's a, it's a bag of worms anyway, the whole thing. But I just think oh, oh, Lost Matador is they're, they're, they're annoying at the best of times, unfortunately. I never really got on the, their bandwagon when they came no. in. Either. Luke Harper is backstage saying how he likes to take things away at Christmas. There's lots of giving, but he likes to take things. He says he'll hurt Ziggler and take away his IC title. Um, I did not like this promo. I, I'm sure Harper can do a really good promo. In fact, he's done some good stuff before. But sometimes people are given a predictable script, and it doesn't, and it comes off like they're reading a predictable script. This yeah. is what I thought of this promo. It definitely conveyed that way, didn't it? Yeah, to me anyway. Um, Part of wrestling, I still believe, and part of wrestling that I, I'd state, regardless of what Vince McMahon thinks, is, is suspending disbelief that what we're watching isn't real, right? Doing that when you've got a very predictable speech in front of you makes it harder to believe that, you know? Um, part of the reason why I loved some of the matches and segments that I do is because for a moment, a brief moment, I'm not thinking, it's not in my head, oh, you know, this is choreographed this is to me it's a battle you know the austin Bret hart match of wrestlemania 13 whenever i think of that match i don't think oh wow that was choreographed really well that was planned really really well i'm like that was a fucking war you know because in my head they made me believe that you know um, yeah the Shawn Michaels Undertaker match, they made you believe that that was a battle for the ages you when you think of that match you don't think of that as being oh that was really well planned you know that was these two guys. You know executed the. Uh, it almost their spots just, yeah exactly really well. that it was literally like just two men went at it in a ring rather yeah. than oh uh, they fought so they planned everything yeah yeah so when they managed to make us you know think about the match rather than everything you know the the, the, the falseness of it all then then that's a victory for them but when they do predictable promos sometimes like this it, it's hard you know I have to say. I think Harper's capable of a good promo. I really do. I really do. It's just the army of script writers, as 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 um, Aust- Austin called them on the podcast. Yeah, they're another reason why the show is not as good as it could be. But that does lead into the Harper Ziggler Intercontinental Title match, and this was a good ass match. This was really good. Damn good match, yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was, a, it wasn't as good as their t- as their TLC match, but it was still good. As their ladder match, no, no. Nor would you expect it to be. Um, so Harper attacks Ziggler at the beginning of the match. Uh, Ziggler accepts to start it anyway. It's the classic face idiocy. Um, as a fan of Ziggler, I really wouldn't care. I wouldn't think less of him if he's like, you know, what? I'm actually not going to wrestle, you know, and put my title on the line because it would be stupid. But, yeah, um, I'm probably in the minority on that. I don't know why they book it that way because they want them to fight against the odds and still give the fans what they paid for. So I'm, I haven't got an issue with that. Um, the first, well, first 75% of this match is the decimation of Dolph Ziggler by the hands of Luke Harper. Luke yep. Harper basically destroys him for about a good, a good seven eight minutes. Even using a Mishinoku driver, I miss Taka Mishinoku. Yeah, it made me miss him. Anyone doesn't know who Taka Mishinoku is? It's under the moment he just dropped it. It's like, oh, <laughs> love it. I love the fact that the commentary was still referencing the Mishinoku driver. Fair play, fair play. Yeah. Um, I hope Harper uses it more regularly. There's no reason why he shouldn't, personally. No. He does it well. He does it well, yeah. Uh, Ziggler then rallies afterwards. He beats Harper with two super kicks and then a zigzag. Um these guys, I tell you what, Harper and Ziggler, they've got some chemistry in the ring. Sometimes yeah. two people mesh well. These guys mesh well. They uh, they can do some good work. It, it just clicks, doesn't it? It does, yeah. There's some guys that just don't have chemistry, like Orton and Cena, which is quite funny considering the amount of matches they've had against each other. There's some guys that do have chemistry, like, you know, CM Punk and Cena have, have chemistry. Lots of it. Ziggler and 
and Harper have chemistry. They're really yeah. good. So yeah, it's coming towards the end of their of their period of matches. But I rather enjoyed these two wrestling each other. It's been good stuff. And Ziggler, he he gets a reputation of being a guy who can give you world class matches week in week out. If he was born in a different era, he would be much more pushed than he is now. One guy well, we who... spoke. We spoke about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've already been there. But I just want to reiterate again. He is the Shawn Michaels of this era. Oh yeah. Just it may obviously we already answered that question. Whether we think was it we said back then we don't think either man would fare too well if they switched yeah. eras. So oh yeah. Um. So the the thing is with this right obviously Zig- Ziggler they've been booking really well over the last couple of months. That's one thing I'll praise him for. You know, they've dropped the ball on Ziggler a lot in his career, but they've booked him last two weeks as if he is a fighter, as if he's a star main event. A true champ. A, tra- a champion, a trooper. You know, they've, they've booked him really well. And the one one person I'm afraid of leading out to, of this rivalry is Harper. And I hope that they don't forget him as easily as they forgot Eric Rowan. Because Eric Rowan's been forgotten. So... I hope that they don't do that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think they can. They can. Oh, but definitely they can. Well, they could. Yeah, I know. Um, but... but Harper would do much better work for that company than Rowan would. I just hope that they don't forget him. I hope they they find something for the guy. But leading into Raw Rumble and Mania, maybe they don't have any plans set in stone for him. They they just forget about him, which would be a sh- which would be a shame. Look look at the quality of matches that he's had over the last couple of weeks. The matches he's been involved in. I wouldn't overlook the guy so easily. That's just what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Kane interviews Ziggler after the match. I don't know about this, right? I love how Ziggler's hair gets all Mr. Perfect after a really intense match. <laughs> yeah. Just poosh, comes out. I remember Mr. Perfect after like a lengthy match. The guy would have fucking... It would, it would be crazy hair syndrome. Spaghetti hair. Spaghetti yeah. hair everywhere. Uh, and Ziggler's got that himself. Uh, Ziggler then praises the crowd, says he'd be damned if someone will take the title away from him, and then he goes and celebrates with the with the title in the crowd. Um, they booked the title here as if it was like a high pro- high profile title feud, like it was the title. Yeah, I would argue if WWE are really serious about taking about taking the IC title and making it mean something again, which is now is the time without the heavyweight championship being around. Yeah then they need a big name, and I need a big main event name to challenge Ziggler for that title, for WrestleMania. And I mean yeah. a big name. Um, now, obviously, it would have to be a heel, so who really go against them that you think would be a big name really depends on really who you want for it. You want an established heel to go against them. There aren't that many around, so it's down to WWE really to find that guy. But it is the time to find a big marquee name and putting in there for the IC title. Yeah. You know? Um Hell, one attraction that you could do is try and get Jericho back, bring him back as a heel, his real, really good heel that you got over, you know, when he when he came back all those. All those oh, years ago. what! How everyone's a hypocrite. Yeah, heel. that. Yeah. Yeah. Bring him back like that. He is one of the all-time, you know, most renowned IC champions. He has the record for most IC championships won, and you have a Ziggler Jericho match for the IC title. I think that yeah. that would be that would be worthy. I think that'd be really good to watch as well but that that's just my opinion but, that would be good but whether or not they have time to bring Jericho back they'd have to have Jericho back for a good couple of months to get him over as a heel before they get to that point if anyone's going to get over as a heel though Jericho is going to be the one <laughs> yeah. so. he could literally just turn heel in one speech yeah he could do he's that Jericho's good. here shut up oh. <laughs> you're all, you're, your mouth breathing miscreants <laughs> yeah. uh, you told me to shut up he's a bad man yeah. <laughs> he's good he's good um, but you know what? He he can get over when he does his own speech, but can he do it when he's got a script handed to him? That's the real question. That's the, the bane at the moment. Huh? I think all. Um, I think oh, if he comes back, like should he come back? Especially someone like Jericho, with how good they are for promo. Yeah. Just literally, like, do what they do with um, Heyman. Do what they do with Wyatt. Just like these are the key points I want you to cover. Don't yeah. go on too long. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the way I would do it. But whether or not they would let them do it or not is a completely different question. But I just think that's a real high-profile Intercontinental title match that would do well to bring this back up. If they want to build Ziggler up as this fighting champion and the IC title means something, they've got a lot of work to do. But that's a that's a good start, at very least. Yeah. But as we said, 
How many times have you and me said, this is a good start, hopefully they go somewhere. We've been saying that for the better part yeah, of five yeah, years. Yeah, and then it tanks. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we've been saying that for so many years now. Even before we started doing the show, we said, well, hopefully this will come up to something. It never happens, so... But now is the time to do it. They've got no heavyweight title. The IC title can be risen up. You know, it can take its place. But there we are. Um, Piper's Pit is next. Uh, now, I remember at one point seeing uh, Roddy Piper in a really bad physical state. Um, I know he was dealing with some illnesses here, you know, pretty hard. Yeah, it's like I have no memory of that moment after seeing him today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, on, yeah, he looks great. He looks in great health. So that's really good to see. Um, and it's one of those things that when you see someone that you know who's gone through a lot of issues, um, and you know, and they've you know health wise, you know, stuff like that, and they've managed to come it out. It was the like other side. seeing, um, like you know, we saw Jake the Snake again recently. Yeah, and it's just like, ah, uh, that's good. Well, it was like it was like almost when I know it's different for different reasons, of course, because Jake was, you know, all the damage he did to himself was to he did it himself, and he'd be the first to admit that, but. It was awesome to see during, like, you know, any videos that were put up of, of Jake being in DDP's house. Just day by day, him looking better. It was really satisfying as a fan to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just, just remembering um, seeing Piper in a really bad mental, uh, you know, physical state. Um, you know, due to illnesses and such. Just seeing him every time, every, every time afterwards, I'm like, that guy looks good. That's good. Yeah. That's good to see. His, uh, his guests for the, for his the episode is... Uh, Lana and Rusev, who apparently have a special message for all Americans, and then she starts saying that all all Americans are a joke. Uh, um, uh, Christmas in America is a joke. They pretend to be good people and thank and, and think a bloated man gives gifts to spoiled children. I yeah. know someone's getting cold this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, can't get away with saying that. Santa, Santa knows who's naughty or nice. And, you know, That's it. So you better be good for goodness sake. Exactly. Um, you know, Matty Claus is here presiding on this episode. Uh, they show f- uh, footage of Rusev attacking Ryback on SmackDown, and then uh, Roddy Piper says that uh, he doesn't. Uh, they don't need to become a couple of com- communist Scrooges because he has a gift for them, and he even put a bow on it. And that the gift- moment I was like that, like Ryback's having a bow on him. Yeah, Ryback's coming up with a bow. It's yeah. like big red bow. It's like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought they were either going to do two things: they would slap it on his chest, which they did, or they put a tiny little dinky bow on his head. And I thought, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought that would get that would get me to shit. That would have been the best one. Yeah, yeah. Well, for like, us, like, not for like, Ryback. Like, like you put in like a six, like a six month old, like when you try and get pictures of like a six month year old daughter, sort of thing, with a little bow in her hair. Yeah. <laughs> just a right back's head, you know, just to the side, yeah. you know, no less, you know. Um, but yeah, so Ryback comes out. This is pretty much uh, formulaic, you know. I back in the days when you got a Piper's Pit segment, you knew obviously there was going to be a fight that happened. Someone's going to fight, but there whether would be... it's Piper himself or yeah. But sometimes Piper would ask some good questions, get some character progression between the people he's got in the ring with, really push the buttons. You know, there would be some really good Piper's Pit segments. I mean, we're, I know we're a long way apart from where Piper would do those sort of things, and this has become a more gimmicky thing. But this was as formulaic as you can get a Piper's Pit. Piper didn't really grill both of Lana and Rusev. You know, he didn't ask well, him any Piper serious questions. Piper has to. That's the thing. I like, it's like, oh, he's got a Piper's Pit. It's like... But he doesn't have to, but it would still be good. Why do you need one? Yeah, but like he would still be good if he did do that. But you know, that's that's the way it is, unfortunately. Yeah, I was just like, well, we got a satisfying sort of return out of like The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's just what what I think on it anyway. That um, it would be cool, but I'm not like going to blame them for not doing that. You know. It's, yeah, Piper's getting on a little bit now. Anyway, even though he is looking good, but, uh, but wouldn't, wouldn't it have been good to me if you had Piper really grill these people and say, "Well, if you're really on Russia's side, you know, uh, grill them on certain things. You know, why didn't you? Uh, why have you taken all this crap from the authority earlier on? You know, bring up stuff that we said earlier on that was really outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe grill why them on did that. you work for the authority, an American team? Yeah, you know, working for an American company. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, why why not build up something like ask them some questions? The reason why they didn't do that is because I'm guessing creative don't have enough on them to really be able to an- answer well those sort of questions. So they just leave. Them. I reckon it's because creative have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, well there you are. I, I I'm completely, completely completely with you on that. I think they've shown that you and me could run raw. I I I doubt that. We'd cut it down to two hours and then we'd run raw. Oh, two hour raw. I think. <laughs> Um, three three hours, I think, no matter how many people you've got. Sometimes I think maybe they have too many writers. I think that's probably an issue. But also the three-hour format. And I've said, and I've always said, I know you guys might get sick of it, but I'll keep saying it. Three hours will kill this show. Three hours will undoubtedly kill this show. It's too long. And I've seen it happen before. I was a WCW fan. Three hours killed that show. And, and with a lot of other stuff going on as well. Yeah, but, like that was the reason. No, yeah, that was one of the reasons. But man, the three hour format just doesn't work. It just doesn't. I think the perfect length for a show is actually less than two hours, personally. But two hours... NXT, NXT manages with an hour. With an hour, yeah. And it's, and it's awesome, yeah. Maybe they need more of an hour because they've got bigger enough roster. You know, they really want to make it. So maybe an hour and a half maybe is perfect. I would argue, I think probably you need two hours. But three hours is way too much. But regardless, we're going into a whole different thing. But anyway, regardless, three hours is will kill this show. It really will. But yeah. Commentary then, uh, then proceeds then. I thought this was quite funny. They basically lick... Um, USA Network's balls by stating, oh, they're fantastic, they're doing so well, they're oh, we're proud to be with them. I imagine that they have to say some of this stuff because the network pissed off USA. Yeah. Um, and I I would say that WWE, they probably burnt a lot of bridges when they made that network, definitely with their, pe- with their pay-per-view box office market. Um, and, you know, they still haven't got it sorted out in the UK, even though apparently it's supposed to be sorted out in January. I heavily doubt that. But... Yeah, I, I thought this was quite odd. I think you could probably expect maybe a little bit more of this than praising USA and doing a few more favours to USA because they undercut their own partners. And when you do that, it's stupid. But there we are. Ah, oh, there we are. Santa's Helpers 6 Diva Tag Match. Um, oh, I forgot about this match. Hmm. Uh, seeing Paige wrestle with Emma reminds me all too well of the five star match these girls had the goal that we could get yeah, yeah. early in the year um, in NXT the oh just exquisite just exquisite lovely uh, but then when you see Naomi and Cameron wrestle each other you show exactly uh, the difference in wrestling quality Fucking between Cameron them. angers me like I finally realised like Cameron is actually I have an anger management problem Cameron <laughs> is my trigger oh okay <laughs> Just fast forward through the through the bits she's involved with, you know. Oh, it's the fact that she tried run into the corner and then sort of slipped, hen hesitated, or I don't know what she did. It's almost like she didn't want to get kicked in the face. That's the problem, right? She does. She wants to be in the wrestling business without wrestling. Yeah, I, I thought it was quite funny when it was brought up that she was going to NXT to do training and stuff, and she came back apparently from doing said training in the performance center. And actually came back looking like she was worse. So I don't know how that happened. Yeah. You get surrounded by guys and girls that are fantastic in that ring and you come out looking worse. Maybe it's just because the sheer talent within NXT drew the last <laughs> remaining bits out of her. That's it, that's it. But you look at Naomi, who, by the way, wrestled really well in this match, showed us some real good athletic stuff. And you're like, ugh. There was so much different of wrestling quality between the two. You realise in the ring who yeah, was yeah. carrying who. We knew that all along anyway, but this just ex- accentuated that fact. Uh, Alicia Fox gets a victory here. She uses a really awesome looking DDT with her leg. Yeah, I thought that. I was like, go. Yeah, every now and then, Alicia Fox bangs out a move that we praised her Northern Light Suplex a couple of weeks ago because it's a sexy Northern Light Suplex. That was a cool little move she did there. I wouldn't mind that being a finisher personally, but yeah, um, considering she doesn't really have a finisher, does she? That could be a finisher for her. No, I thought. I thought this match, but Cameron. Was actually okay. Um, I think when you look at it, definitely it's not any even close to the horrendous tag matches that we had. <laughs> it, it, it showed who everyone's favourite diva was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone loved it. Like, literally, the mo- from the moment she came out to the moment she left, Paige was getting chanted. Yeah, of course, because Paige is awesome. She's much better than being involved <laughs> in matches like these. But the yeah. fact's just watching her wrestle, Emma is just like, come on, come on, just do it. One week, right? Just do it. 
Give us a 15 minute Emma and Paige match and just dedicate yourself to giving us that match. I guarantee you guys, you would, the main roster, yeah. you will get something special. And I guarantee you, if you, they actually got that time, then Vince would look back and go, oh, it's too much time to give them, you know, the fans will, you know, want to switch out. You will get a phenomenal match. These girls yeah, would kill it. themselves for that amount of time to fight, to, to wrestle each other. Because mm. they know they can do it because they've done it already. That's yeah, it. That's it. Uh, the another the, the second Ascension promo we've made our thoughts very well known I'm hoping for a Christmas miracle with their gimmick but I don't think that will happen uh, The Miz against J- Jay Uso um, this whenever Miz comes out you really don't want to watch Miz wrestling it's the epic battle between Miz Dow and Vacant that's happening and Miz Dow was doing his thing like a boss um, I can't wait for the crowd reaction when they finally pull the trigger and decide, okay, we're going to do the big moment where Mizdow does step up to the Miz. But the problem with that is that, like, I'm really scared of Mizdow falling into utter obscurity after that happens. Yeah. Because, like... What, what, you mean similar to sort of, like, Miz and Alex Riley? Yeah, like, Alex Riley, he was one of the... um, He got some of the biggest reactions on the weeks that he was fighting the Miz. And he was actually, like, on a a pay-per-view match against the Miz, and the fans were totally behind him. And then the guy tanked, and they just got rid of him. Um, Because, ideally, there was nothing else much to him apart from that. You know, he got his victory over the Miz. Where'd you go from there? He went nowhere. Um, And I hope that the same doesn't happen for Mizdale because Mizdale's better than that. But that's why I want them to drag this out a bit, a bit longer. Make something of this tag team. I don't even mind this tag team lasting another six, eight months, honestly. You know, drag it out, make, you know, keep it going. And then when you when when it when it does sign, show signs of dwindling, then you can pull the trigger because people will still be on it. But yeah. don't be too quick to pull the trigger now because you've got, I guarantee that they've got no plans for Mizdow after after breaking these two guys up. So they need to keep this going as long as they can. Uh, that's my opinion on it anyway. Yeah, definitely. Miz steals the win by pulling the tights. It was a boring match. They're building, yeah. they're building up the Naomi factor more and more as they go along. Um, I know apparently something's happened on SmackDown with um, Naomi and uh, her husband having issues there, you know, along those lines. It will play a factor. The Naomi factor will come into play in their next match. They air an advertisement for the Mick Foley chapter of the Monday Night War, including the classic line by uh, Tony Schiavone. Um, oh, that'll put butts in seats. Love that line. We can't yeah, see that. The, like, see, there's just like, if you look back at the history books, they'll refer to that as the dumbest mistake ever. Yeah, it, it was one of the stupidest things they ever said on that show. Um, and it's exclusive on the network, so fuck you, WWE. Bring it out again, back for this episode. Yeah. There you go. Uh, this brings us to the main event, which, as I thought, should have probably been switched for the IC title match, and maybe made something really big of the IC title match. Uh, and man, the notes I have on this match are massive, almost a page long. Because, as I said, I think I figured out the reason why this doesn't work. But let's talk about the match first, okay? Okay. So, Wyatt comes in, he starts, um, he cuts a promo before the, um... The, the actual match starts up. He starts singing It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. And I can think to myself that he could record the creepiest Christmas cover album of the year. Yeah, just He's a bit. That, you know? <laughs> Silent night. <laughs> you know, that like could be creepy as hell, man. He tells the fans that they're not safe. There is no Santa or Christmas in the real world. His world is suffering and pain, and he's taking Ambrose there again tonight. Um, there's a part in this match... When these guys are, you know, battering each other with all sorts of equipment. JBL's commentary goes brain dead all of a sudden. And I'll I'll, I'll tell you the moment that it was, and I had to slap myself. So, Ambrose picks up a TV, which isn't plugged in this time, by the way. Yeah. Right? And and we all know what happened, you know, Ambrose being being booked as if he was an idiot rather than anything Bray Wyatt did to win that match. But you can hear our thoughts on uh, the TLC match on our extra episode we did ages ago. Uh, And he says... Oh, but it could still be wireless. Well, I'm pretty sure a flat screen TV needs a power source. Doesn't matter if it's wireless. That's a, that's a stupid fucking question, yeah. right? Well, I'd like to ex- excuse me, King. Uh, let me know next time you find a portable TV that size. Yeah, exactly. With a built-in battery. Exactly, right? It's not King. It's JBL who said it. Um, but then could JBL sounds stupid enough. That you could kind of say, well, you know, even regardless, it's still dangerous. You know, all the issues. It's probably best to leave it down. Fair enough, JBL. But then he goes one further, and this is the real brain dead one, by stating that the table 
isn't wireless. Oh God, yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah, I, 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 I mentally let that one slip. So, so you think that the table has wires? It's a fucking table, JBL. That's it. Did it's you not a think wireless what table. You, said? you are yeah. the voice of the biggest weekly wrestling show in the world. Think before you speak, please. That is your job. That's what you are paid to do. What a fucking stupid statement. That table isn't wireless. That I'm gonna have to get that sound sound bite. The table isn't wireless. It's not a wireless table. Gee, <laughs> you think? Idiots. Honestly. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, I'm all for these guys. Right, here we go. Here's, here's my thoughts and the reason why I don't think this works. So, I'll try and speak this as eloquently as I can. I'm all for these guys trying to kill each other in a blood feud. But we still don't have a reason why they actually want to kill each other, technically, right? We're, we're... Yeah, other than the fact that Wyatt got involved at Hell in a Cell. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, which you think, you know, fair enough, that was frustrating. But there's no reason for re- for the reason that Wyatt attacked him in the first place. So the reason why Ambrose and Rollins worked was because it was a breaking of brothers, right? It was a betrayal. It was a big moment on Raw. You'd understand that, you know, there was even moments where Ambrose really didn't want to fight Rollins. You remember that moment where he was going to take him out? He was kind of back and forth where he was going to do his move or not. And yeah. then he did and all that lot. Which was cool. That was alright. We liked that. We praised that back then as well. With Ambrose and Wyatt, there is literally a... a you stopped me from getting revenge. And fair enough, alright? That's annoying. But would, would you really want to just attack each other this much for it? You could say, okay, for instance, Ambrose is unhinged. You know, he's just finding someone to fight. That, to me, isn't good enough. Yeah. Right? You have an unhinged character, but here's the thing. Here's what I come up with. If Vince wants WWE to be more entertainment than wrestling, which we know he wants, he's already stated that, wrestling's what his father did, he does sports entertainment, right? Yeah. Uh, if he wants that to be happening, you know, and that people to look at it that way, then he needs to start obeying the very basic rules of character progression and character creation, okay? Which is, Characters need a set of morals, they need a set of motivations, they need history and personality. Right? Yeah. Let's go Otherwise, through. Otherwise, what are we getting behind? Nothing. Yeah. Um, in a nutshell, these characters need a good and decent reason for their actions, and they need an end goal for what they want to achieve. Okay? All characters need that. Otherwise, they don't work. Okay? Or they're not very good. Yeah. Let's look at Ambrose. Does he have a good and decent reason for his actions? Well, you can argue and say, well, actually, maybe he does, right? Does he have an end goal? No. Let's look at Bray Wyatt. Does he have a good and decent reason for his actions? No, he doesn't. He's never told us any, any. oh, apparently no. we could be the same. That's, that's, he hasn't, d- dis- he's good enough on a mic to display why he wants to do something. He just hasn't really done it. Does he have an end goal? No. He doesn't. So you've got two characters there that, that go against the basic rules of char- of character writing, yeah. That they they've got nothing here. So yeah. basically, they wanted to tell a story between Wyatt and Ambrose. They don't have a story. There's no end goal. There's no reason why these characters want to obliterate each other. There is no target for them to accomplish by doing so. You know what do they get from killing each other? They get nothing. So that's why fans can't get into it. That's the reason why I think that you and me, Matt, can't get into it because it doesn't matter who wins or loses because where does it go from there? They, it's not as if one man Ooh. will stand triumphantly over the other. They haven't built it up like that. It's not a battle of pride. It's not as if one of these guys will never be the same again. They've booked nothing into this. You know, it's not. It's no personality change that will happen by one of them winning and one of them not. Lo- one of them losing. You know, one of them won't be changed forever by the outcomes of their matches. You know. Uh, there's no character progression by one of them winning and one of them losing, or something that happens between them. As yet, of course. It's just yeah, it's just currently it's just two people just going at it. Yeah. So the match itself, right? The match itself is good, right? It's it's enjoyable to watch. They're bashing <coughs> each other around, they're using presents and stuff like chairs and everything like that, right? Like they did at TLC. Yeah. But it suffers from the same issue as the TLC match had. It's a high profile match without a profile. That's that's I think that's what it, that, I think that's probably yeah. the easiest way I can do it. I mean, it's one thing, the worst part is it's like it's a TLC match. Well, no, you have to climb up to get something for a TLC match, and now it's pins. Yeah, well, I, I think that's the main issue here is that it's a, it is a high profile feud without a profile. It doesn't have an yeah. identity. There's no end goal. It could be massive. 
but there's nothing going for yeah. it. There's there's no repercussions of their actions. There's no end goal. There's nothing that will change from them doing what they're doing. It just seems like they're fighting each other for the sake of fighting, which so, may have got over and may have been okay to do back in the 80s, but now you're stating that you want to be an entertainment company. Well, give me something to entertain me. Yeah. Do you think that the big shows like Game of Thrones, every character in Game of Thrones, regardless of whether they're a prick, whether they're good guys, they have motivations, moral, they have morals that they that they stick to, they have end goals that they want to achieve, and they have you know a, a set of um, of personality that impacts their decision making. Okay, and all yeah. of that, all that is done. You know, all those characters have different things. You know, the way that Joffrey would get something done is way something that is different than the way that um, Sir Barristan Selmy. I know this is going into just but they're two different characters. They go around doing. They have two different end goals. They get two different ways of getting there. They have different um, repercussions of their actions. Here, between Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose, there are no repercussions of their actions. Nothing yeah. changes. There is no end goal. That has to be established for us to care about this feud. There we go. At very least, what they do with John Cena is that they give him at least an end goal. They give him something to look to at the uh, at the end of the tunnel. We see yeah, that it's his beat title John shot. Cena. Yeah, it's his title shot. It's all his morals that he has to you know fight and strive to protect. It's all his hustle, loyalty, respect. Yeah. And... Which we may not like, but at least it's something. Here, it's nothing, and that's the reason why the match is is struggling to get up, get into our minds and make us really care about it. That's yeah. my assessment of the whole situation. Would you agree? Yeah. I'd love to hear yeah. what other people think about it. Because... No, you it's like uh, cuz I was sort of struggling to think so like, why aren't I getting like so and then you just you've just put it so well it's like <laughs> I I, I, I that's actually it. Yeah. I, I I don't like not knowing why I don't like something and I have to go out and look and figure it out. And I think that's I think that's the main reason. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's power it's 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 basically bad character writing is the reason. In a nutshell, a high profile match without a profile. So, uh, so the match finishes. We'll talk about the end of the match here. Uh, there is a kendo stick propped up by the turnbuckle. And considering Ambrose takes like tables, chair shots, and slams onto a ladder, it feels like a fairly tame way to end the match by him just getting thrown into it, you know. But yeah, um, I'd imagine that'd be. I guess if they were going on the whole, he got choked by it. Yeah, but I mean, it didn't really look that way um, to me, anyway. He wasn't—he wasn't, no. wasn't grasping his throat and struggling to breathe by any measure. So, I don't know. And I doubt, very much doubt, that Dean Ambrose next week is going to be wandering around and selling that throat injury. The guy just doesn't sell the damage. Yeah, he's done. Just... <laughs> <laughs> With all the wars that he's been involved in, he's always been booked as a guy who just doesn't take damage. He's just, yeah, yeah. Next week he comes back good as new, which I think damages him more than anything. And, you know, one, once before, I mean, people might say, oh, but guys, you were slamming him for having that shoulder injury for weeks and weeks. Well, the problem is, I don't mind them selling it the week after, and then, then the week after that, so two weeks after their match, him being in right as rain. That's how I think they should do it. The thing is, they had that shoulder injury for the better part of, like, two and a half months. Yeah? It, became his, it became almost part of his gimmick. Yeah, exactly. So, um, that was a bit too much. You have to strike a good good medium but not selling it at all is definitely wrong i'd much rather him sell it for two and a half months than not sell it at all honestly i would have yeah. to say but there we are um after the match after bray white gets the victory then um ambrose uh, uses a fire extinguisher on him then elbow drops him for a table to close the show and literally ambrose can't even get up and celebrate they're just there wincing in pain as they finish off the show and I'm pretty sure they're just tying over these rivalries until Mania, until until the Royal Rumble, sorry, until their Mania plans kick in. Um, and then they can start really going in some sort of direction. So, unfortunately, yeah. that means that leading up to the Royal Rumble, we're going to get a lot of chaff. Um, and, you know, they're going to build up towards a Cena-Lesnar match. But as you guys know, we've already had that twice before. So, not exactly much to get excited about. Although, I say the Royal Rumble, it's always something to get excited about, because it's the fucking Royal Rumble. It's the Royal Rumble, yeah. yeah. So, it's always awesome. Um, so, and also, yeah, because also here, it doesn't seem as if WWE are holding back their pay, their payoff matches. They did a lot of pay-per-view rematches here. They did Rollins Cena. They did Ambrose Wyatt. You know, a lot of their big matches at the pay-per-view, they're just redoing it again. So, they're just yeah. tying stuff over. Uh, all in all, I thought this match had some good matches in it, but all in all, I think, unfortunately, it was a tad bit boring. I think watching it in three hours 
kind of damaged my viewpoint on it. If I'd watched it in two stints, I probably would have a little bit, more, little bit, little bit more positive on the show as a whole. Yeah, I mean, but, I like you binged on it this week. Yeah, but I would state that there's some good matches to be seen here. There really is. There's, uh, you know, that IC title match is good. I thought the last match itself is okay. It's just, I, just, I think it's a good match. I just. Obviously, I explained there why I struggled yeah. to get into it. Well, and the opening match was good. Opening match was good as well. So there is some good wrestling to be seen here. Um, but I'm still a little bit sad that Creative didn't have this opportunity just to throw everything out the window for one week and just go silly for a week. And people would have forgiven them for that. Everyone else does it. I was going to say, you can still keep stories going and go silly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're going for a very serious storyline, then you just keep them away from each other for a week and they wrestle other people in funny matches and stuff. I thought one of the funniest things that, that, that WWE ever did was like a very comedy-inspired match between Daniel Bryan and Tyson Kidd. This is years ago now. Um, but they could have done something more akin to that, having a few more funny things like that, you know, made people really laugh at the show. Have fun! with the show but unfortunately it. it was just another episode of raw um but as i said i'm probably a little bit more cynical on it because I, normally i do watch it in two lumps i watched it all together and by the end of it it's all blurred into nothingness so it just burns yeah, it out burns in the out. end yeah um is there any of your thoughts for raw this week uh no i can't say i have anything left to add other than that we are all wrapped up this show i think it's another two hours roughly that we've given you there this week yeah, back, must be. back back to to basics there <laughs> Uh, if you guys uh, did enjoy the episode, then you can leave us a like. You can also subscribe to the channel, as I know plenty of our newer listeners have been doing. Uh, we should be, I'm pretty sure, within another couple of 10, 15 episodes' time, we'll have our 200 subscribers under us. That's it. That'll be fun. Um, but if you really want to leave us any questions, then do so down in the comments. As you know, we are very quick to answer them all on the show. Uh, if you leave a comment and we don't get back to you, it's because we're normally waiting to do it on the show. That's the way we like to do it. It's a little bit more personal that way. Um, if you also want to ask any questions on Twitter or send Matt any funny pictures or just questions or anything like that, at TalkWrestlePod, you can see the uh, the handle for it there on the on the page. And uh, I hope you guys did have a great Christmas. This is our last episode of the year, so I hope you have a great New Year. Try not to get too drunk. I say that to Matt as well. Oh, Are you planning no, I'm, on... I'm, I'm working both sides of the day. No, no. You can't be no. working New Year's Day. Oh, suck. Yeah, no drunk for me. Oh, oh well. Uh, so you guys, I tell you what. In which case, you guys get as drunk as you like for Matt. Then make Matt, make yeah. Matt, make one Matt, for me, Matt. one for Matt. Uh, I will be drinking a little bit, not too much, because yeah. there's no there's no bank holiday for when you've got kids waking up in the morning. So. <laughs> uh, but we hope you guys have a great year. We'll see you in 2015. That just sounds really weird to say, uh, but it's been a great year for us. We hope it's been a great year for you, and uh, we'll catch you next year. Oh, Jesus, yeah, that does sound weird. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.